Just make sure it's facing yeah, you. I am, I am <laughs> Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now, um, so we, as you all know, we've started this new uh, arrangement. Uh, next week, who, who's going to, before we get going? Uh, so I was supposed to do next week. Yeah. So I can do it. Oh, you're going to do next week, great. If we know, because I thought we were going down. No, no. So it wasn't the um, business standing, because I thought as well it was it was next week, but then he... He wrote the 25th. Wrote the that's right, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I haven't lost my mind. I did think it was okay. Good. Okay, so next week so you can, can do, do that. Week, yeah, yes. and then the following week is I will the break. Send you everything by Monday, and you'll be very excited about everything. <laughs> I will send some images as well. Great, excellent. I think it'll probably blow stuff in away. Yeah, excellent. It beats, I, don't, I don't get much time on Monday evening, Tuesday evening. Read, oh, there's so not that much time to read. I don't write. <laughs> 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 that's that's yeah, that's, that's not good. 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 Okay. So, okay. So, Jakob, you'll be next on, yeah. the, on the block. And then um, the when we return from um, from the thing, from Easter, <clears throat> Grace. Okay, good. And, um, and I also want Henry to try and get there for both of you because he's on the committee, obviously. You don't want Henry there. I, he does. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah? Okay, good. Oh. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, where to begin is my problem. So I have sent you what I have done so far in terms of um, tutorials and records of tutorials. And then two bits of text. One wrote the, for the conference uh, last June, and one wrote last Monday, two days ago. Um, they are about the same thing, but I am. Um, the second text is far clearer to me and far easier to read. Um, I will try to explain why I am interested in complexity and what I think it can do uh, to an artist of its philosophy. Um, what do I, I really hope is that rather than I just talking, you will ask me plenty of questions because I, I am blocked, I can't wrap it. Mostly because I have these knots of, uh, of ideas in my mind and then I have to link them and every time I arrive there I just don't know how to bridge one to the next. And I really hope the speaking will help me do that. So mm -hmm. don't hold back if, I, if you, there are things that are not clear because that's exactly what I need. Can I ask everybody here then to be really honest about your writing abilities? Um, because, and we don't, I mean, I, I want this, we don't have to put this on the web if you don't want it to go on the web, but I think it's good to have this recorded. Uh, I don't want anybody to feel embarrassed, but I think it's very important that if you're having difficulties writing and you can share how you dealt with that, or what, especially the two of you, or the three of you that have gone through the PhD, so you know the kind of weird, paralytic thing that happens. Um, this is a serious problem. And that's, I, I, you know, um, and we're going to get you over this. Yeah. Well, this mostly what, what, I, what happened between these two texts, uh, which are, uh, one is austic and uh, almost impractical, and the other one flows very well, the recent one, is that these has been, the first one, the ugly one, has been written as I write an article, I sit down and try to write an article. These is just the notes I take one and I read just transcribed and cleaned up from, from grammatical mistakes, nothing else. Uh, maybe this is a bit too quick, but it is far clearer and makes, to me, much, far more sense than this one. Um, I am now probably going to copy the 34 notebooks I have <laughs> into the computer and use them as, as the, uh, the first uh, layout of the, of, of the work, because otherwise I would cost it to just look at the screen. And so let's start with what is your research Title. Oh, the title of the research is um, Finitude, Possibilities, Dimensionality, Aesthetic after, after Complexity. And I will point immediately the attention to possibilities as plural and dimensionality as singular. Um, and then it's an aesthetic after complexity. Now, it, I put it at the end, but this is what I started reading about uh, a few years back. Why? And how one wants to discuss aesthetics from uh, the scientific uh, field and the, the epistemological 
problems that face with this academic field. Um, it's not obviously uh, in touch to mathematize aesthetics, but this is what I wrote in the email a few days ago. I find that uh, almost too, too often or almost all the time, uh, the, the so called humanistic approach, mindset approach, ends up identifying art and aesthetics with the senses, one way or another, uh, in a traditional way, or as the order of language, or uh, as that which would not like to be the order of language, but cannot be but the order of language, um, or much more, much more on our level when we deal with the critique of art as discussing what the world is about, and never really looking at how the world works, which is the practice quality of it. <coughs> And intuitively, uh, at some point, quite three years back, I saw a, a brief BBC documentary about uh, algorithms and evolution. And that seemed to be the way to explain what I meant art is and how I think it functions. Um, and as I, a few years down the road, as I put it at the end of the email I sent on Monday, um, my intention is to, to eradicate and willingly use the strongest question art from the sense to reinstall it in, uh, in the dimensionality where what is material and what is material, the senses, the rationality, and the history of the relations are constantly folded upon each other so that one has a sort of fluffed up substance which is full and full of holes at the same time to be viewed. Uh, and it, is, it becomes impossible to separate two again. Um, my, this comes from my way of making art, where I really think that the artist deals with what is, what is there and how it is there, and tries to find ways to, to raise questions through it. So and can you walk us through like a, a piece of work that you've done? Um, so it's not this abstract. Work that I, this work I've done was, for example, um, um, a literary blog that I am part of in Italy, because it's a collective blog, and it's, it's got open comments. And looking at it from outside, it's, mm, it's logic, it's material, what it really did was stimulating comments from the public. So what I've done was writing fake poems, I'm not a poet, I can, can't write a poem to, <laughs> to start with, but anyway, I wrote something uh, willing to fake, and then I invited the public to raise that raw material to the threshold of professional to see what, what would happen. So I turned around the attention to, from I published something to you now work on Twitter. Mm -hmm. The background was the, the relational aesthetics that was fashionable 10, 15 years ago, but I just, that was almost an excuse. I was interested in, in turning this, this thing around. So um, if I can just intervene one more time. Um, so some artists will go outside and and put things somewhere and see what the reaction is, or just, you know, and, and it sounds like the out there where you're putting things is actually this this thing called the net, or the, you know, sort of the, the In network. this case was the, was the net, but sometimes this was far more material. Than, um, and when you say far more material... Well, I made a pyramid, uh, literally a pyramid, with uh, stadium seats, 100 stadium seats uh, facing out yellow plastic stadium seats um, and it was installed in the square in general open to the public. My, again then my son was, was to turn things around. It, it, it was much more of a controlled intervention this one, for example. Um, but what I wanted to see is it was possible to turn inside out the, the shape of the stadium and, and, and before make make the, the position of whoever wanted to sit that uh, at the same time being that of the spectator and being exhibited uh, therefore being in a position of power and being vulnerable um, so when you speak about the making of that work mm -hmm. not the work itself mm -hmm. the making of the work you're saying that that's a form of the algorithm of the complexity no 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 the, that came in later on um, what, what I had in mind with all these, uh, with the algorithm of the complexity, was that these works and all the things I've made did not aim at something. We were engaging with what was already there, 
and almost taking my intervention as part of what was there. And the result was something extra. It was not representing an intention, or at least if anything, the intention would be, let's try to disorder it and see what happens. So, could you It was not representing an intention. Yeah. But if anything, it was a curiosity about disorder and see what the disorder could bring out. Although you made a pyramid which was ordered. Yes, but it disordered the position of the uh, spectator and the uh, mm. uh, 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 exhibitor mm. object. Like. Um, and the, so there is non-intentionality or non-linear non intentionality. Uh, I always found very difficult to explain and I, I, I always, so more, most importantly, I always found that everything I read was not responding to that. Um, and instead, these, intuitively, when I saw this idea of algorithm recursiveness, it blindly repeats itself until it comes uh, to, to new configurations, uh, um, uh, more than what was there, without being implicit or predictable from what was there before, from the previous state of the system. That, to me, resounded as immediately, this is what I can use to explain what I'm doing. Um, <coughs> It took then a, a long sort of detour into understanding what complexity there is and how I could use it before I could formulate an argument. Um, and what I find uh, uh, very interesting, uh, I can say now, is that complexity brings a challenge to ontology, a radical challenge to it, um, because it undoes uh, uh, the idea that is implicit in the whole ontology of the, redu the, the, reduction, the, re the reduction of what is to an essence, to a substance, to an origin. Um, and these, it's very interesting because uh, it's the same uh, inner paradigm that animates uh, the more uh, scientific paradigm of classic physics, where everything can be reduced to atoms. Now, this is where then the, the part of um, uh, complexity theory becomes more important in the world because um, the process of emergence, which is a technical term, uh, which can be described as the, the, the arising of properties in the system that <coughs> were not implicit or predictable from the previous state of the system. Oh yes, the process of emergence um, does not comply with the reducibility of classic physics. Actually, it does the opposite. It implies in an irreducibility because there is entropy involved. Therefore, what in uh, Newtonian mechanics would have pushed to, to its extreme consequences allowed to rewind time by just uh, inverting all the velocities and the motions of particles in, uh, in uh, with thermodynamics and complexity, which are two sides the same, not two sides. Um, well, how is that the case? Um, well, because thermodynamic becomes calculated with probability, no longer with direct linear causality, from the work of the physicist, physicist called Boltzmann. Um, Boltzmann failed this attempt, um, but the mm. regime with Stengers in the 80s reworked is uh, both mathematically his formula but his concept and were able to prove that processes uh, that are based on probability versus linear causality, I'll explain what this means, have an intrinsic irreversibility so that re reducing what is the present to basic elements is no longer possible. And how does that then link to making art? Well. I, I find that the reducibility implies, or better, sits inside a paradigm of representation. And if the present, which I can put forward now, we can talk about it later, coincide with sense, if the present is not reducible to basic elements or to a point of origin, then I have to deal immediately and only with a complex surface rather than with a priori um, elements that are somehow pure, clean, or, or, or 
metaphysics of it. And so in this sense, it is, uh, it is possible to speak of the surface of the present as this thing that is always already complex, only complex, um, as that state of affair I mentioned earlier with which the art history engages. So, sorry, I, other people should be able to jump in here, but I'm just, uh, so the notion of complexity, you're using complexity in a very specific way. Yes. Can you elaborate what that way is? Well, there are, the complexity um, has, can be described with two main uh, words. One is irreversibility, and the, the second concept is non uh, They are actually expressing the, the, same, the same concept from to science and quantum. Um, and the, the calculating through uh, probability rather than calculating in linear mechanics implies that, um, it's, first of all, it is something that is applied to a system with large, large number of elements. Um, if uh, it's not, there isn't much probability of between the tank and, and the bottom. Um, it starts with thermodynamics because it, it, it is a study of the behavior of gases where calculating the behavior of single particles becomes unfeasible. However, this is not a problem, uh, the same problem that uh, Laplace was hoping to solve uh, in, at the end of the 18th century with uh, the idea of you know, the, the imaginary position of a demon or, or a god that could see all the particles a given moment in time, and therefore with an amazing computer power of you know, divine brain, calculate how they will develop in the future or how they were in the past, therefore have a perfect image of time all the way from the beginning to the end. Um, and the, 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 the position of scientists was that unfortunately as humans we are imperfect, we can't calculate that, but ideally we could. Calculating to probability undoes this radically. Because it shows that when the number of particles uh, is uh, very high, which is what applies not only to gases but to population, society, economics, everything, complexity becomes a science that is transversal to the um, And when probability is involved, uh, the, the, um, the system, in some instances, and I will explain when and how, um, <coughs> might uh, enter a chaotic form of repetition where the, the next step is no longer is the particle going to go this way or that way, but is it, the repetition goes to an infinity uh, period. So, and then the particle will, the particle or the element of the choice is uh, random, as in there is no reason for taking one direction or another. Once that direction is taken, all the other possibilities are excluded, we have a new state of the system. However, because that decision was random, going backward implies again considering the infinity of possibilities of, of extreme high number of possibilities. Therefore, the amount of energy or information required to go backward is too high for the system to revert. And therefore, um, th this, is, this is the irreversibility of it, which coincides with an irreducibility to basic elements. This is, is where the, the, the thermodynamics starts separating from classic physics. And so the error of time is in one direction? The error of time becomes in one direction. But also there's something else which is not immediately there um, in, in classic physics but becomes more evident when looking at the philosophical side of the problem. There is no longer that uh, image of uh, time as a linear chronological time discrete moment going from past to the present or the future next to a plane of eternal presence. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, because that, that is precisely the, the, the projection of um, Sorry. of reducibility. If I was actually thinking, probably there is some reference in the text I wrote on Monday about this. Uh, the, the game of Monopoly, the idea that you, you, at a certain point you are sent back to square one, or we go all the way around and go back to the start. There is a line that goes around the, the game. Now, if 
one is working in uh, or thinking within um, classic physics that has this idea of time of present, of eternal present next to the timeline. Um, it is as if that square one is always next to whichever square or whichever moment on the line one is, and one can always go back to the absolute beginning. But if irreducibility instead is uh, the paradigm, one needs to rework backward each step or wait to go around um, and to, to get to it after having walked through the other steps. Um, is what uh, I find uh, mm, the, the, the critique that, that, that I was trying to, to make to Media Sue's argument in this short text I sent Monday. So the point says that Media Sue wants to put facticity as absolute because it cannot be justified. But it, it, what he ignores that facticity as an history, that cannot be avoided either. So, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mark. <laughs> Just see, has a history. Oh. Sorry, can you repeat that? Well, well, you just well, mid sentence. No, no, well, it would be a period, but yeah, this is a good Yeah, well, I was trying to. We're saying about the medicines. Right, so we're talking about the reversibility. Um, <coughs> so that. that Irreversibility undoes representation. That's where well, it goes back to. And to me, representation is this um, possibility to always justify and explain the present moment in function of something else. And complexity does not allow that. That's the fundamental point. To so say that bit again? <laughs> that yeah. representation is a model of thought, uh, as I understand it that always permits to justify the, the present in function of something else. In, some, in, in function of something else. In function. In function of something else. So I didn't I get the whole sentence. Is a representation is a model of thought yeah. that allows always to um, understand the present yeah. in function of something else. Why is there something else? Why is there something no, else? No, where? Well, you can think it in many different ways. Um, I don't, I, my, my, my point is to, to move away from that. And with, with complexity, say that the present is only the, the self referred or if anything is just a result of the previous The The nonlinearity is what does not allow to, to, to go back or to reduce it or to jump forward. Uh, that's something else that was as an absolute. To, to, to use an expression that we're more familiar with, complexity does something very special to the notion of groundless ground. Because in, 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 in groundless ground, in a certain way, it is a, a way of thinking that the ground is no longer there as a solid, direct, certain uh, absolute. It's not the linear causality, but we are still thinking in terms of that is no longer there. So we are, we are thinking in negative terms in, in respect to, to the notion of ground. Um, is what at times with a bit of irony, I I call the deeper complex of, uh, of the rose or the applied, that they have this problem with the ground and they, are, they, they would like to have it, they don't, and they, sort of, they can't really get away from that. Um, <laughs> I find that the complexity does get away from that, or permits to develop a new way of thinking um, that is no longer in need of one ground, or even thinking I am a surface without a ground, because it, it is a new way of, of uh, creating coherence or cohesion that um, find its justification and its necessity internally. And that, to me, is a very, very interesting uh, point to start thinking from again. Okay, so if that's the case, I'm sorry, if that's the case, so is that then your introduction? 
I'm gonna help. We're gonna help you write this thesis in yeah. <laughs> the next three hours. So that, is that your introduction then? That the, the problem that the context, the research context, is that the ground was always the problem, and then it moved to the groundless ground, and the groundless ground required a surface, and the surface was not quite right because it just sort of acted as a metaphor, and that instead what you're doing is is moving to complexity, mm -hmm. and then from complexity you're moving to, um, well, within complexity you have the thermo, the, the uh, thermodynamics yeah, the problem, yeah. problem, the problem of thermodynamics, the second law of thermo, whatever it is. Anyway, um, and then, uh, and then what? Well, these, um, what these does, I was saying this a moment ago when you answered before, these, um, sorry about that, no, this, fine, uh, moves from the paradigm of representation, where the present is always in function of something else. And so why is the problem of representation such a problem? Why should that be such an annoying aspect for artists well, or for yourself well, or anybody? If, if I, I, but firstly, as my experience, I've never represented anything. I did not have the intention of coming up with a meaning with my work. I, it was just pure curiosity. Right. So in other words, the work is not standing in for something. No. And Including the, the pyramid of the yellow chairs. But the fake poem is standing in for the poem. No, because the material of the work was not the poem. It was <laughs> the material of the work was the dynamic of the blog on which people made comments. And, and the position of the official writer and the official public. And I sort of went through it. With who, who knows this thing apart from you? Well, all the people that answered were under the more comments. And, but and I participated in the comments as well. So you were also a participant in your own. Uh, in that instance, I mean, I, I was replying to some, to some because obviously. But this is the nature to any any sort of art that is properly art. Like when you say that yes. it doesn't stand for something else, you just say that it's, a, it's got its own reason to yes. exist. But so that is a, a definition of art, a piece of art. Should Contemporary. Be, yeah, should always be like that. But, but in the in the olden days, that is to say. Um, before, let's say, thinking about contemporary art, art did represent. That is what it did. But I think it's not really. I'm not saying that's a good contemporary thing. art in the sense of the contemporary object of art. It's the contemporary look at the art because you can look at ancient art hmm. through through a no, contemporary agree, perspective. Agree, and, and so that's why I was I was I was showing Berlin, which is mm -hmm. not contemporary art, but you can look at it as if as if you were. Point. How do you respond? But I absolutely agree with point. that, and I, I think that indeed the problem. You totally agree. With that? Yes, because my problem is so. in a certain way. <laughs> Sorry, well, that's going to be a very short thing. Let's go now. No, but it's, it's part of. There are two two points in the answer. One is that the work I'm doing takes as a departure point, not as in I am moving from these ideas and I build on them, but what I want to get away from. Um, some over iteration of postmodern elements which I find now stay. Um, I don't know if I, were, I would ever have said that they were positive, but at this point I find them unproductive. So. Um, and what are those? Well, the, 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 mm, the mm, idea of. Um, um, it, it, to me, the point is that, the, the, especially the Lewis has been a big delusion for me. So we said alliteration, <laughs> um, because I, at a certain point, found that it did not go past uh, in metaphysics where there is a representation of an absolute. It just is disguised. The equation of, of <coughs> representation is collapsed with the other side collapsed on the equal sign, but difference is still the absolute. One way or another, it's just a very specific one, but it is not. It's a special case if you like, but, but no. It doesn't move away from the argument to them, Jacob. I just for previous one, because I'm thinking because it's kind of it's like it's it sets up uh, reductibility as a representation of himself, right? Reducibility, reducibility, sorry, and irreducibility of the uh, post complexity mm -hmm. kind of uh, approach to art, and I think uh, it sets up this two spectrums, sets up a spectrum, and a kind of I, I was thinking what Alberto said about the, how we can look at something that appears to be representable, uh, re, 
that appears to represent something through the eye of a contemporary art and in some way make it, I don't want to say make it, I don't like the word, but um, it stops being reducible. It becomes irreducible by that. So suddenly, are you suggesting then what So it mean? doesn't necessarily has to always fit into one or the other as in kind of because I feel I get that feeling so oh is that or is that and maybe there is a way of Well the, um, no. Something that's half passed doesn't mean it's not, I'm not setting up this sort of uh, dualistic opposition. Um, the, the fact is that I hate binaries. <laughs> that was my note. In order to explain where, where this is going, I, I need to also clarify what I am criticizing mm. in the part I'm outlined, so to speak. So, uh, and also, in irreducibility as no linearity are terms that have been used uh, by the physicists that have studied this, um, Stangers writes at length in Order Out of Chaos, which he co-wrote with Lydia Brigogin, uh, about the non reducibility uh, of uh, complexity. And, it, and she develops um, a criticism of the, the classic model of science that, that is uh, a one could take classic science out and put ontology in, and it is exactly the same argument. That can be moved to that. So, Sorry, but non reducibility and irreducibility are two different words. Something that can't be reduced mm -hmm. and something that shouldn't be reduced, in a sense. That's what I get from those. Something I, non reducible. I, I didn't take them as different. I don't mean, think of that. Um, because irreducibility suggests something that literally cannot be reduced. Yes. yes. They cannot be applied to the concept of reducing mm -hmm. something into basic forms. Mm -hmm. and non reducibility seems more that it shouldn't, at least in my mm, understanding of the strength of the world. Yeah, I think that, that it, I think that it's a, something to be argued. I don't think it's necessarily the case. Yeah. But are you then suggesting, both of you are suggesting, well, I hear from Alberto that what he's suggesting is that what's so new about what you're doing, this is what art always has done. And I hear what um, Jakob is saying, slightly echoing, um, I say this with love because mm -hmm. I know, I know that this is not, mm -hmm. you're doing something new. Uh, and what Jakob is asking, sort of on the back of what Alberto is saying, is are you providing then an epistemological move? I do. Um, no, I am. I am. <laughs> uh, but maybe I can get to that by also answering the yeah, other part of Alberto's question. I absolutely agree that this is always what art has done. That good art and good artists have always they have always been in the ease and never represented something else. Um, I wanted to actually bring as an example today, there's a painting of Garen Victor, which is titled New Descent of the Stairs, imitating Duchamp's uh, painting, and which is actually a painting <coughs> of a photograph of his wife descending stairs. And he paints that uh, photograph, including the reflection that the, the plastic coating of the photograph had while he was painting. So he is painting a surface, he is painting a representation. Bellini, or any other moment in, in, in the history of art, was working not on the landscape painted, but on the rules and aesthetics of the representation. So one is always working on, on the screen and never on, on the linearity of that. Explain that again. Yeah, what do you get what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Um, Let's put it like that. Um, the, when uh, uh, art is seen as with traditional art that presents images of reality, uh, is uh, seen as representing something, it, uh, to me it doesn't, and I, I agree with what I was saying, because the artist has been working on the, the, the laws and the aesthetics and the practice and the history of representation. That's what the quality, the artistic quality. Um, so Do you agree with that so far? Yeah. Okay. So instead of the, 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 the artist doesn't work as in I am going to visually present the statement, but I am working on the visualization of the statement. Uh, if it has an history and as it is the first time what the history is, how I can present it, 
how I can present it with one technique versus another. Uh, but for example, let's say Andy Warhol's soup can, which is very mm -hmm. memorable. Uh, that's okay, a picture of a soup can, and it's a picture of a mm -hmm. Campbell's soup can, but it's also a comment on... But it, because the material there is no longer the representation of reality as in a picture of reality. The material is multiplication. Okay, that's what... So he's working on multiplication. Already he's going, he's taking another transversal vector and jumping on that one. Um, and he goes... So, what would be the difference then between Andy Warhol mm -hmm. type of work and and uh, Bellini's work. I mean, from at the moment, the discussion can is. I, can I can I give my opinion? No, not for Bellini and and Warhol, but like, I don't think there's a big difference between Bellini and Warhol. Like, it's not essential. The, the thing is, let's let's think about representation. Like, not sure if you say that a lawyer represents someone. Do you say that? Yeah. In English? Yeah. yeah. So, um, think. Let's think about the lawyer and then think about the actor. When you when you see an actor that is becoming, you, you say that you say Marlon Brando is. You don't say Marlon Brando represents, the, whereas the, the lawyer represents the. Yeah. Okay. So the the difference I think is that why why one is uh, is art, one why one is the character and is not representing the character, whereas the other one is representing uh, the. How do you say the, the guy? The character, whatever the defend, defend, the, 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 defend. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. So, in, in the same way, it, it's it's not it's not really essential the difference between Bellini and, and Warhol because both of them are in the realm of art in the sense that both of them are uh, doing something that is, whereas some and they're not caring about something that represents because also Warhol uh, when when when. When you use the representation, is using the presentation, but it's not representing. It's not just representing. It's creating something that uh, acquires conceptual depth because of its being art. Yes, I don't disagree with what you're trying to say there. But what I would disagree with is that still, at the moment in which the shift went from a Bellini type of work to a Warhol type of work. There, there was and still remains an argument that that's not art. No, no, just, just I'm not saying that but, it's not but, art. But I think, think it is art. Let, let's think, let's think about um, someone in between. Let's think about uh, Canaletto, okay. who used uh, some optical device to create something that was a photo before the actual possibility of making a photo. Mm -hmm. That will be sort of in the between because you have, in that case, you have still the, the manual uh, labor and craft of actually mixing the color, these sort of things, but at the same time, uh, the artist is trying to negate its, its own choices and try to, to create, actually, a copy, the, the most accurate possibly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Somehow. So there's a very different mood. So what, what I'm trying to get at, exactly that point, is that it's not just the perception of let's say the 21st century looking at art throughout the ages and now coming with a different epistemology, there's something about the production of art itself, which is also, I think that's what you're saying, mm -hmm. which is also being re reconfigured. So, it, so if, I think if, if, Mate, if, Mateo, if Mateo was saying just, which is a lot anyway, that you're coming with an epistemological move that will enable a very different read of art throughout the ages, that would be interesting, but that's been done like 50 million times. Okay, so there has to be something that, sort of in addition to that, you're doing. You're doing at least that, and you're doing it in a way that hasn't been done technically in terms of the complexity mm -hmm. issues and the, and the way bringing in physics, but I think that um, both Alberto and Jakob have thrown out a challenge that you need to um, clarify or at least respond to because it's not just the way in which something is looked at. No, absolutely not. And actually, um, I was thinking while um, Alberto was this kind of what he meant, that um, it is not, um, I, I don't want to, to dwell too long on the notion of representation because I'm not trying to put representation wrong. It, it has been attacked from every angle already. Um, what I am interested in, in developing is uh, these two extra steps. One is looking at what is not yet 
and, and, and that's the next step is instead of taking that as possibility, which has a very uh, large metaphysical baggage attached to it, um, I, I, am, I think, and I believe it is possible through complexity to uh, propose it as dimensionality. Um, and this is what the thesis really puts forward. Um, that possibilities are not um, somehow uh, to be fulfilled, but are the physical dimensions of the present. So the, the temporality that grows with complexity becomes not only uh, removed from that plane of eternal presence of metaphysics, but is also a growing line that does not have a, a stretch in front of it. The present builds itself progressively. Um, and and to, to describe these, um, to, to, well, not to describe, but to, to explain it, what, what really uh, explained in a rigorous way is a concept that comes from Mandel, Mandelbrot, and one of the uh, discovered and developed the notion of fractals. Um, where, uh, which are one um, way of calculating complexity, <coughs> uh, where he says that the iterations of a, of a, of a system um, is always a repeating its iteration, just to introduce it is, uh, in, in fractal terms, is a form of repetition where the result of the repetition is fed back into the system and becomes a parameter for the next iteration. The system builds upon itself. That sounds kind of like how it escaped dialectics. No. <laughs> For, For two reasons. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it is interesting. Actually, I would actually say that dialectics is, uh, uh, is, a, sub, um, set. is, is a subset <laughs> of a fractal, so which especially the Serpinski set, it seems. Uh, the triangle divided in triangle, and triangles, triangles. and triangles. It's a special case of, of a fractal. Um, um, well, it's a common case of fractal. Yes, but it's especially as he is one of the many possible. Uh, the fact that it is often found, found that is one of the many possible. Um, what the, the, what, what the, 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 the fractal uh, <coughs> is feeding back and becoming the, the parameter for the next uh, the next iteration does, or better, what, where this happens is that it's not trying to reach anything. It is a completely blind iteration. And very often it can uh, just uh, repeat and be reabsorbed with not much happening. Um, I was I mentioned earlier uh, the physicist Boltzmann, on which uh, Prigogine has worked a lot. Uh, and he, he developed what is commonly known as the law of large numbers. If you have a system with plenty of particles, whatever perturbation you throw to it, most likely will be absorbed. And the point will go boom. <laughs> But there are instances where the, res the resonances will actually increase, defy entropy, consume a lot of energy, and produce new properties. Uh, this is due to the fact that the, 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 the idea that the system can be closed and perfectly sealed before entropy will reach an end, before having an economy based on totality, is in the, in the idealization in physics. There is no sealed system. There is always something leaking in or out. Um, so this already is not a direct system. Well, system so so as soon as you speak of systems, mm. it's just like another kind of dialectics. No. Because they are constantly <laughs> open. Unless you want to open dialectic to infinity. But then it's a very strange But are you suggesting that the word system... I think rules and um, rules are, rule. are you thinking systems are rules? Um, yeah, I think like they, they, they like to, like if you think of systems as assemblages, um, that it's like um, you just sort of open and close systems, but it's still like um, an entity that instead of like where there's a separateness, you've separated a system. So oh, as soon as you've got a system, you, you've done a separation. But that's precisely the problem that complexity brings up. Is that you, one could say that the system making very raw uh, uh, comparison. A system can be compared to ground. An open system with the ground is ground. The process of iteration and expansion 
it is something quite different because it is a game of composability that responds very much to, to Leibniz. Uh, Don't go there yet. Just, just um, stay, stay on this one thing. So, um, also the, 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 there is also the fact that we have to describe the physical problem. I'm using the language that I, I find the physicists use, so basically consistent. Um, what then becomes uh, very interesting is what one can do with these um, very strange processes that defy entropy and build situations. And here I'm, I'm starting to use words in a different way. Build situations that have uh, more information than they were there before. Yeah, and but that, that, that would be more. It's, it's kind of more helpful by putting it than describing that as system because it's, it's more blurry. But I, I don't think I can, I can immediately start the argument by using a new term for this because it is quite important to understand. It, it, it is a complex, in this sense, a complicated and, 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 and subtle argument I'm trying to do. And if I don't make sure that all the passages are pinned in the right time, they end very clearly. First, I lose myself. <laughs> but also, it's completely, we uh, have uh, never been able to make a point. Because there are a number of concepts that uh, are uh, need to, to be clarified and need to be uh, and progressively evolved in the light of all the others. So I, am, I have to bring them forward in simultaneity. This is one of the difficulties I'm finding. With, with um, but I mean, I think you should hold your ground on, the, on the, or, or or not around mm -hmm. the word system, for example, or or around like for, for the, the the work that uh, Jacob's doing on poem Cestuous, mm -hmm. that forms a system. It's just a but, system that is not. It's the reason I I would be comfortable using the word system is because it says that there is some form of a logic that it's not this arbitrary connections. There, so a system that is a poor system is one that to me is rigid, it, it's got a linear logic, this kind of thing. But a system that operates in terms of creating um, a cohesion, to me, that's a very different kind of system. Especially if the system is no longer working in these kind of um, uh, sort of um, oppositional positions like time versus space, but in fact instead you have this uh, both superpositionality that you, you've often talked about and also mm -hmm. the question of du uh, duration, simultaneity, setting up these uh, notions of dimension. But also probably because we, you brought up this uh, yeah, no, I think that question of system already a couple of times in, in the past. I so have can a, I, can no, sorry, can I just quickly ask no, one yeah. question? Uh, <laughs> no, no, I would write the email about it. No, no. no uh, <laughs> I don't write emails. But uh, I want to kind of clarify, how, uh, what do you understand by repeating? Because I have a struggle with, with what you kind of presented and then suddenly going back to the word repeating that okay. repeat itself um, the best in the idea the of something that is non-linear in a sense. And, and to look, I, I, kind of, I think I can imagine mm -hmm. it, but I kind of would like to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> or even show it. Oh, show it. You can write it. Because you kind of men mentioned that, that and you went with Elliot. No, no, Sorry, yes, I'm like yes, 10 yes, minutes behind yeah, what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah. I think <laughs> um, my brain I, I, takes well, time. Once, um, it was quite a couple of years back. I, I had this image in one of the reading before of uh, taking a physical law as a model. Mm. And a physical law, you can say, a certain degree of comfort doesn't go anywhere, it just does what it does. It repeats itself blindly. You drop the pen, it keeps going. Yeah, that's, that's what happens. And you can think of that for biological laws, for any, any sort of scientific environment laws. What is interesting is that this repetition might be somehow inert or be absorbed by the system to up, amount to nothing different than what was already there. And then, in some instances, might combine with other forms of repetition. And then you have not simply gravity, but gravity plus the law of fluids, 
and you have a fine note rate with the basic stuff. But you haven't answered his question yet, which is the question of what actually is this thing called repetition? Well, it's an algorithm, if you want a name for it. No, it's a but you're still, you're, well, I, you're moving the game, so you keep... You see, algorithm can be closed and can be open, so it can lead into infinity, basically, mm -hmm. so it can just not repeat itself, just can go. Yeah. In non-linear kind of jumping matter, and that's not really algorithm, to be honest, but it's my calculator that I created doing my IT. You know, it never divided. <laughs> and it crashed doing dividing, but it did something else because it was crashing, I'm kind of thinking about it. But when it, it's enclosed, it always performs the task and it repeats itself to go back to the zero on the screen in the sense of uh, to the clear of the task. And, and that zero on the screen, not that it's zero of the seven, it's a zero, actual zero on the screen of the calculator, let's say, that, uh, that is kind of the repeat place, that from that moment it can repeat itself again. Oh, but it's always different repeat. So I'm kind of thinking to myself how each repeat doesn't, it's not the same repeat. And the zero point is not the same zero anymore. It's always somehow uh, different zero because it's. Yeah, I see. I, then, then I doesn't understand what you mean. No, the like, which, which kind of conform, confirms with what you're saying. You cannot go back in a sense. You cannot go back to that zero that you have that you did before you put the equation in, even though the zero will appear again on the screen at the end of the equation. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, no, but I think that I, I don't understand then how it is that you're so angry with Deleuze because his difference in repetition mm -hmm. is like a cornerstone for and, what. And the other thing, <laughs> <laughs> you, you seem to like this notion of self constrained mm -hmm. extended, extended. And I think here she, she makes reference to the activity of machines that obviously are self constrained mm -hmm. and then makes direct reference to. Deleuze is virtual, natural, so she's like... Yeah, she's been to Deleuze from your face, it's true. <laughs> so it's like uh, the very thing that... Um, Self-constrained comes mostly, comes mostly, comes from uh, Mandelbrot. Uh, it's a self-constrained chance. And um, John Holland, who's another a scientist who has uh, popularized complexity, speaks and comes from neurosciences and modeling neurosciences through computers. Um, Speaks of um, constraint generating procedures. Procedures. Um, there must be uh, not limits, as in you cannot go any further than here. But there are shapes to matter, and those shapes are dictating the possibilities. We can, for ease of speaking, st still use the word possibilities. But possibilities and dimension are the same thing. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there, Barbara. Can you summarize the discussion so far? I'm not sure. Give it a go. Um, I'm really not sure because the whole question of complexity is, you know, it's it's something that somehow the how you presented your thoughts so far is is also a really good metaphor for complexity. I mean, it's really hard. I mean, I'm sorry, that no, 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 no. maybe may just my feeling that, you know, it's really hard to, and, and I thought that might be the reason it's also hard for you to put your thoughts in words, because, because the whole concept is so complex. And when you say that the way I present the complexity, what do you mean by saying the way I present the complexity? is a good metaphor for complexity. In my mind, I am describing mm -hmm. what I have uh, read in all the scientific books, or scientific books that describe complexity to the public. Well, it's like this. Mm -hmm. you're, you're describing it, it's all like this. Whereas I sort of feel as though for your thesis, it needs to be a little bit more like that. Yeah, but so then that you can thesis, it wouldn't it. be valid. Like, in a, in a certain whatever, I, I don't get completely what you're going, but that's great because I think that's what you should do. But in the fact is yeah. that if you, and that's the kind of what Henry always says, you need to embody, and that's all about embody. Yeah. You need to embody your theory. Like it, I cannot do anything else, especially with a piece of thesis. You, know, you cannot not have it 
being con somehow in the realm of complexity with with speaking about or talking about it, you know, it needs to um, be because yeah. if you do this, no, no, I didn't mean that it has to yeah. go like that. I just mean that there's there's too many scribbles around yeah. it. Yeah, I see yeah. what you mean. So yeah. there are too. I, I'm yeah, not that it's just sort of yeah. and running in place. Maybe, maybe what you should do is give the chapter breakdowns, and then okay. we're going to ask somebody else. So we'll whoever looks happens. alert. He's going to be asked to summarize this, yes. Can I just ask you. what part of the thesis you're talking about now? Well, that's we still the No, no, we aren't. We, it's that, that's the main problem I have. I can't organize it linearly. But I, found, but I found very interesting delving into the argument from one detail like when I was reacting to Mediasur text and then plugging into it all the things I've read. Um, but I can't focus on. I can say complexity helps me describe uh, describing um, a new way of a different way of thinking that at best is a completely different from ontology. I hope it does away with ontology as the main model mm -hmm. and which is something else which I have named dimensionality, uh, which goes back to the question I asked is about standards two weeks ago. Uh, in, in, if, if we do not have uh, objective measurability, and if a platform, if, if a scientific model is at best a platform for raising and refuting object objections, then what are we, how are we uh, engaging, already measuring is not only the right word, but how are we engaging with this new situation we are in? Because we do not have background dimensions anymore. The dimensions are merging with the system developing. The system develops and rearranges zone parameters at the same time. So I, what I would put forward is that dimensionality is, um, is the intensity of complexity, not the measure of complexity. But it's something. It's the intensity of complexity. Yes. So that's a good chapter title. Is that the aesthetic? Well, aesthetic and epistemological or aesthetic and ontological no longer make a difference. Because if I... If you mean what, they're interchangeable? No, yes. No. There is one thing. It is. It is a singularity that it can have one, two, three, seven dimensions, and each time can have different dimensions of the previous time. It's not that there is. They are in a, in an hierarchy. Because if we are building something not on the background of something else, but upon itself, which I think is what complexity does. The all all the ways we've been thinking, becoming, or or uh, the grounding of meaning. Uh, are, are upset and are radically upset and, and reorganized in a completely different way. Does that make sense? So, yeah, a um, question. I don't know if it's possible mm -hmm. for, for a PhD, but would that maybe make more sense mm -hmm. for, for, for what you want to say and for, for the structure of everything of what you're saying to just create a good introduction and then not write a thesis, but and like a website with tags and like so 20, awesome. like 20, 20 <laughs> tags or whatever and then then you the, the user get one two and then you have like pieces of what you write it could be enough piece of things next to it but I, I'm well it could, be, it could be a practice-led thesis in that sense and you could only write 40,000 words yeah. but no you can't be that avant-garde you know thesis you have to sadly you have to do the thing that looks like what the powers of being. But exactly what he was saying it was like something that it's a system that uh, turns any time you, you... What are you saying exactly that, like, two minutes ago? Yeah, a system that changes its parameters while it's a yeah. yes, yes. Would be, I think it would be good to have a, a, an yeah, output okay, that it looks exactly and, like and, that. And I, I don't... I'd be very happy to be able to write it in very traditional terms at the moment, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I don't think you have a problem writing it, I think you just have a problem organising. Yes, 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 yes true. You've got it all, you just can't organise it. So, okay, Chris, your job now is to say, <laughs> <laughs> what is it that you think is the argument here? Well, I think actually he did sum it up quite well, but I don't think... Can you remember it? Oh, no, of course not. <laughs> No, of course not. Just repeat what he's written on his, you know, on his initial abstract that he sent the other day. Because I asked him, I asked him if he could um, state his research question.
because I didn't understand that he was, where he was going to. It was just like a piece of writing, so it's this one. So I like this bit where he says it's the impact of complexity theory on aesthetic and art making slash thinking, given that complexity radically undermines ontology for something far more ephemeral, but equally rigorous, where time and sense converge. And that's nice, but then you don't stop. <laughs> I think you need to have some stops. <laughs> but I think that I think that is a good question, and it's really interesting. And you've got loads of people to go. That, yes, but then because you don't, you keep going and going. You seem to keep re-entangling. You keep making more and more knots. Yes, no, that's uh, indeed one of the advantages of the, the, the last, uh, the most recent text I've sent was that. I forced myself only to copy what I had written and breaking down the sentences as many pieces as I could. Mm -hmm. um, and did it help? Well, it seems to me clear. Yeah, it's clear. Um, yeah. Well, where's the pleasure? Where is the pleasure in this? The whole thing is, I mean, beside the problem of writing, it is only pleasurable for me. Um, <laughs> 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 I was really convinced. <laughs> That's a little bit of pleasure. <laughs> okay, what is this? Pleasure, pleasure is pain. Okay, where is the pleasure? I believe that the whole uh, problem, yes, the whole problem of the question of the thesis could be taken from, from your angle. I, I absolutely agree. The question of the thesis could be taken from the angle of what is the pleasure. Okay. If, Obviously, we become a different thesis, but it fits perfectly. Um, no, I think you were not, you were asking, is Mattia getting any pleasure? No, no, no. no, no what is the what pleasure is in the aesthetic? Oh, I see. Right. Okay. It's okay. just <laughs> similar to understanding. <laughs> 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 if it was an ontology, it would go, it could easily trace it back to some kind of feeling, but which is what aesthetic you know, generally. Which is the yeah. metaphysics of philosophy. Yeah. Philosophy has metaphysics. Does. But the, the pleasure. The pleasure. What? what if we go back to the beginning, what I was saying in that I, I have I've been trying to find a way to explain what my experience as an artist, uh, what I what I felt in the experience as an artist, what I thought art is and art making most important is uh, to my my work. Um, the, the, another way to, to describe or to, to, to um, talk about the non intentionality for the non-linearity, for the non-representation character of an art piece, is that I always thought that, honestly, I don't really care what comes out of what I make, because I enjoy staying there making it. But is what's coming out, are you creating aesthetic pleasure, a feeling, or are you creating epistemological questions? So is it social critical, your, we, we do, your we, aesthetic? I, don't I mean, you're starting. It, you're it, it, material it, signifier the century that you want to get away from art as the century as that. But in a sensory, the traditional way, I, I find that uh, when I, the example of the blog I brought up at the beginning, uh, it, it has an aesthetic. It is simply not the five senses aesthetic of accepted by the tradition, um, it, because it treats the dynamics of uh, usage of the website, the blog, as material. But it does not respect the traditional distinction between material and material. When you say the distinction between material and material, I know that I should react to this. Mm -hmm. But it does look like A equals A. That's what you're saying, right? When you say material and material, that sounds, it sounds like they belong together. <laughs> it's like, so what do you really mean when you well, say material and material? Are you saying objectivity <coughs> and materiality, or are you saying Else. What are you saying? Well, I say material and immaterial. Oh, in immaterial. In, yes. Oh, I just misread you. I thought you were saying material no, and material. No, no. The, the, I was thinking, wow, that's. I'm missing something here. Yeah, okay. Never mind. I'm, I'm all right. And it, it, the, the, <laughs> so, so the, 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 the line of representing meaning, the line of expressing meaning, which is a variation of variation, um, can be open, since yesterday we were reading the other literally open, the cut the line open, make it become a surface perpendicular to it, which is the time you spend working. That for me is where the pleasure is, and that's for me, it, it, the, the work of, of a complex form of becoming is precisely doing the same, because it is folding upon itself, it's not aiming at something. 
can just stay with itself, doing what it does, and in some uh, instances, this doing what it does produces more. So why would that be called art? Why isn't that well, called art? It's not the, what is also interesting here to me is that by asking this question about art, uh, I actually come out with a question about, with an answer about sense in general. Uh, and art can be a very good, becomes a very good example of it, or one of the many ways in which uh, sense can be declined. Declined? No, they're the articulated, or uh, oh, right. one, one of the examples of sense, but... Um, how, how does, I mean, does, do you recognize the Kantian dis distinctions between the sensual uh, taste for charming mm -hmm. and the aesthetic as something completely different? And the aesthetic judgment, yes. Yes, so you do start, you do have that in your canon. Um, I so this sorry, 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 no, sorry, no, sorry, no, 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 so you were saying I, but I, I do understand what they are but I also, like, what I find what, where are you going with this question because I, well like you can have um, a, a sensual immediate non-temporal automatic kind of art light-hearted you know just this everyday stuff that people like more in Rome techno mm -hmm. kind of art which is just there. And then, in the neg negative aesthetics, that can then become aesthetics, which is which is non-temporal, you know, like both sort of uh, non-temporal, reality, complex, always divisive, always going somewhere else. But that is my understanding, you know, the negative aesthetics. And what you're doing is uh, maybe uh, all I can do mm -hmm. is then sort of kind of rewrite. Or Alan says kind of way over the top, you know, and try to try and understand. Careful, he doesn't mean it like that. Obviously, obviously <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm obviously, obviously I'm waiting for the whole, the whole, the whole piece. I'm just trying to get a handle on what, where you come. No, I, I. So I was just thinking. Um, you see, that was my question about an epistemology mm -hmm. because if it's an S, I mean, is it you know what's the important? Is it social critical that you're being here? And what's that got to do with the aesthetic, which is a feeling, and it goes off? But I can understand, yeah, I can. but I'm just trying to. Well, I was thinking of yeah, because I can You kind of lose the. It, it seems like you're losing the pleasure, not not losing. When as, you say you, uh, you. as in in uh, Mattia, what Mattia presenting, it seems like that this kind. I think. What I believe is your, the pleasure you're describing it seems like Matthias is losing, which I know you're not. And I kind of thought to myself about, uh, which is, has nothing to do with everything. <laughs> so <laughs> this no, thought came to me, there is a kind of, you know, uh, repeating a task and expecting different results, knowing what the result's going to be of the task, let's say, but expecting different oh, results in the form of insanity. Right. And that kind of, I thought to myself, of that insanity, in respect to what uh, Mattia is doing, that insanity is very much uh, body-like and, and pleasurable-like, and I think that's the kind of dirty little pleasure. I believe now I understand why you're asking this it. question. No, there Especially is, you know there are going to be different results. Um, but you're still going with there it. There is something else yeah, that I, it's not, it's not, I, I see what you mean. Um, the repetition is not the repetition of my personal actions as an the repetition, the, the, the problem of repetition comes through, let, let me rephrase it. Once I start, I am dissatisfied with the way aesthetic is tied to the senses and separated. I momentarily leave aside the artistic making and I engage with the, the paradigm place aesthetic in one position and epistemology or rationality somewhere else and how that has come about and how that can be undone. So the, the, the argument of the thesis deals with this separation and how complexity completely uh, shatters the, 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 the reasons for this separation and puts forward something where this separation simply no longer makes sense. It's, there is no uh, it, it, it's irrelevant to speak of epistemology, aesthetic, or ethic if you are making your present when you are there. Oh yeah, I get that. Yeah, and so that was basically Alberto's yeah. uh, attack, I think, in the sense that um, you were being accused, mm -hmm. in a way, 
of privileging epistemology or at privileging some way of dealing with this thing called art. Mm -hmm. And you're not well, doing that if I'm... I'm not, the thesis doesn't probably do it. As an artist, I probably looked at art epistemologically. And uh, it's, it's been my take, yes. Lee, do you have a way of addressing this? Because your work is dealing with some of these issues. Do, do, you, have a, do you have a way in for this for Mattia? I, I, I'm not fully understanding kind of the, the whole picture. I, 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 for me, it, um, from what I'm hearing, uh, no, I don't actually. I'm sorry, Johnny. No, the reason I'm asking because, is because because I'm I'm not really getting it quite at the moment. Okay. I'm trying to listen as long as I can, but it's yeah. Uh, it okay. seems a bit uh, it's too f fragmented in some way. That instance, the story isn't together. It's not speaking to me in a way that I, I can kind of grasp. It. I mean, obviously, I understand some of the the details of it, but it's it's, it's the picture that I'm. It's kind of almost as if it's on magnifying rather than Yeah, actually. that's absolutely it's, true. Yeah, well, it is on magnifying. Um, if you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it would be helpful to give your three chapters and explain how there's like linked. Which, uh, because I think that your sense of cohesion yeah. is what he's getting at from a different angle. Yeah, that, that's I, why I, I was yeah, I, in terms asking. of the. Yeah, the complexity and the dimensionality and, and the kind of all, all the things merging into a yeah. kind of soup almost. That's right, of, except of, it's like or, that discrete elements to yeah, this. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Do you have titles for the chapters? Uh, yes, I know. I mean, I have three versions of three chapters. Uh, and <laughs> three uh, different I, titles. Um, one that was proposed for the 30th of October was to have Finitude versus Infinity uh, as the first chapter then going on to another one titled Openness, Purpose and Cohesion to finish with contingent bodies or a, a metaphor which I, I was body without skin which I am trying to draw. Um, Can you move yeah, the I'm losing the pleasure. Yeah. Trying to drop the body. Sorry? It's an organized body or an open body. Yeah. I am aiming at the, 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 what I'm aiming at the sense which is it, if, if you like, this is a dialogue with the logic of sense of the laws, which... Well, that's helpful then, because it's, it's okay to pick somebody that you're having a discussion with, as it were. If you're in an open dialogue or, you know, some kind of dialogue with the, the logic of sense, and you're taking that as your sort of um, organizing feature, that's good. That's not a problem. Well, it, 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 that's the I meaning. He leaves. <laughs> it, it is. The, the logical sense of the is on one side, and uh, I am looking to after Pinito is on the other side. And I'm trying to distance uh, myself from both. Um, I am closer to the news, but I find that um, in the end, the news doesn't do what he was hoping to do or what he says it's doing. Um, I once discussed it with Laura on the train. <laughs> if, if, uh, if uh, I mean, uh, several times, but this, this I'm going to say now. This is my criticism to the Catch another train. That's right. That's right. Or the, or the, the vision of it. Um, in, in my um, reading of the Lewis, there is, among uh, other things, a very intense use of Leibniz's notion of a zero and one, of zero and segment, where the zero is a special case of the properties of the segment. The Leibniz you, you, you came up with it through the calculus to describe rest as a special case of motion so that calculation could be made of um, astronomical movement. But if you think of, you know, stay with this, okay, I have rest, which I named zero, is a special case where there is no motion, but it's still speaking of motion. So rest is the difference of motion that is related to motion. Now, we can have the same zero and segment about something else. My impression, and I'm American, plenty of other things, 
My impression is that what Deleuze does is to unify all these zeros, so making become one difference, yeah, and, and, and then actually start making them spin, move, not giving them, or not, I don't want to say agency, but certainly these zeros become the intensity out of which extensity decays and becomes body. So how is that not just another name for God is not explaining to us. Um, and that should form the context of your first chapter. Okay. So you basically say here are the two poles in which postmodernism has had its issues. One could be summarized in the Deleuzian move, and one could be summarized in Miller Sue's move or Optic Brain philosophy, or something like that. So you want to say one would be the rhizomatic and the other would be the, the, the um, speculative uh, realism. And while those are general characters, in the play, you pretty much explain why yeah, one is yeah. doing what one is doing, what is, and you know, and that sets the context. Because then, if I can add to this, uh, what I think remains positive of the world is set as a positive, or at least very, very interesting problem by the Lewis. Uh, the Lewis, plus Fatali, the, 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 the notion of Rhizome obviously is. Uh, the, the way sense is built to complexity, provided we, the, the, the notion of plane of immanence does not remain as this continuous difference that is a metaphysical thing from which things come and in which everything can then melt back into and holds all the, the, the pure virtuality of what is actual, because otherwise we have not got out of representation or metaphysics. Vice versa, Megasu does not want to take that and focuses on contingency only. And by focuses on contingency says, first, and it's very interesting, if I stay with contingency, what I end up with is that there is no reason for things to be as they are. And therefore, unreason is something fundamental. But then he goes on to make that fundamental, first to make that unreason absolute, and then to change the, the, the known reason, in, or the impossibility of, of proving the reason into possibilities of things to happen, plus all the mathematical that is the only one that can speak about this. So the, 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 privilege, the privilege of, uh, of consistency, sorry, contingency that Medesu uh, uh, aims at is very, very interesting. The problem is that, that he ends up not doing it and bringing back uh, the absolute uh, and to support contingency. So that's really your challenge. Your challenge is, is that every time people have tried to get out of metaphysics, one way or the other, the most recent attempts being Deleuze Batari mm -hmm. and uh, Melissou and Gang, let's say, in very broad strokes, um, there's always been this uh, bringing back in an auto-theological move. Yes. And basically what you're saying is if, you, if one takes seriously the relationship of, in this case, physics, by which you mean a very tiny version of it. Well, it's interesting because it's tiny, but it's actually Spread all over. No, 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 I know. I mean, it's just it's the same Hobbesian move. Mm -hmm. So, in Thomas Hobbes, of course, he takes the notion of movement as Newton, mm -hmm. as Isaac Newton puts it forward, and develops an entire political philosophy around this. So, you're doing something similar in the sense that you're taking uh, the notion of uh, complexity, entanglement, and incompleteness, and you're saying, well, this is how th there's been a paradigm shift. Let's enable the things that come out of that paradigm shift and sort of re, retrain them in a certain sense, mm -hmm. or re-engage re with them, or engage with them, so that there's a way to actually have a parallel expression that's happening in physics happening in the so-called art. Or, or, and so it's not so much that you're necessarily describing literally what happens in the making of art, although maybe that's what you're doing. Maybe that's too big a grab for the thesis. Well, I but no, then you're I'm explaining not, you're explaining I'm, a very tiny thing, which is I, I'm, yes, I, I'm not. But there are two 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 answers. I'm, to, 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 to say. I'm not explaining how art works because the problem was that the way art is spoken of or described uh, is the problem I had. I mean, I could have gone on, on working happily and all without. Since I have engaged with philosophy, I found very challenging, but not very challenging, very. Uh, fantastic problem with which to engage the way art is addressed. And I want to redress that. 
And to address that, I found by studying that the problem was ontology, the image of ontology as of itself and of the world it wants to present. So I had to work to rework that all the way. To the That's end. what you have to say in your introduction. You yeah. have to contextualize this. And uh, okay. And then uh, yes, so you take in material signifiers that belong to physics, could be said, and then you want to engage them as material signifiers that belong to art. So then the, mm. you're taking one language game. No, one logic. Uh, so I had this. This, thought, uh, this doubt several times um, mm, because if I did that, for example, I would, could be uh, criticized for, after all, giving all authority to science mm -hmm. and therefore um, just staying with mathematics is what rules and actually authority is there. Um, no, I am not doing that sort of translation. I, uh, uh, Stangers has developed already a lot of work where she sees how science brings challenges that are to uh, ontology so that ontology needs at least to reconsider part of, of its actions but there is also all the work of Popper for example that, that is part of this um, uh, this is the, you know, that's for example is the open order chapter incompleteness Gerber, Chaitin in fact what so read your your newer version of your three chapters uh, your newer, uh, So while you're looking for your chapter headings, um, there is a, a tool that might be useful for you in your thesis um, that not all of you have to use, maybe none of you will use, but it's called the counterfactual argument. And the notion of the counterfactual is basically that you take as a given that which is not true, and then you show why that is a ridiculous thing to do. Now this might sound completely insane, but it's it is an old method of how to build an argument. And so you build the argument in terms of a counterintuitive or counterfactual argument. Now, Hobbes starts with the counterfactual. And the counterfactual he starts with is that there's a thing called the state of nature. And the state of nature, he claims, is that is the reality around which we must build a totally different way of looking at something. And from that, there was never a counterfactual, there was never a social contract. He builds this entire argument based on Newtonian physics about what it means to be human. Mm -hmm. Now, I think in here, you've got a what does it mean to be human thing going on. Yes. You've got something going on that is not dissimilar in the move that Hobbes is making in terms of taking on certain counterfactuals the counterfactual of what, I don't know, uh, modernity is about, or what, you know, so, something that allows you to set the stage. Well, in the, fir the first place, I mean, I, I don't want to say that my, my way of reasoning is the same thing as my argument, because that... No, yeah, I agree. Uh, it's not that, and also it would, to, to, to carry that out properly, it would require skills about that. Um, but certainly, uh, I need to start from something. Mm -hmm. And the, I don't pick my starting point at random. There's, is, I pick my starting point, with, which in this case was uh, the, the, the way of speaking about art in a post-structurally post-modern life, because this is what is going on, and I, this is the time I'm living in, and, and this is the language I have to use or to refuse when I speak about art. So that's setting the context. The very first move you do in your chapter is to set the context. And if that's the context, that's what you set down. You set that down as the context. 
So you just explain that, like pretend that guy is sitting in front of you and just write it to him. Just tell him, this is the context guy, you knocking around here, you like blah, 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 this is what I'm actually doing. Literally. Okay, yes. And then once you do that, it'll produce little shoots for you to go, mm -hmm. decide which way to go, and then you pick of those shoots, three main shoots, and the rest of them you start folding in to the chapters. Because you want to then, okay, you've got this context, and that's going to set up a problem. And yes. The problem is that, and A, you're going to, if you're not, you're not necessarily having to solve the problem, but you have to point out ways to deal with but this problem. Indeed, there, there are, there are what, what the, the thesis aim at now, I see what you were asking about. It's not, it's not a chapter, but it's in, in, in the 30th of October tutorial. Uh, no, not enough. No. Um, the, the thesis aims at, Rediscussing or better re, re reconfiguring the notion of transcendental, and with that, um, to a certain degree, uh, work on incompleteness as uh, um, some some dis two concepts that can help define what the dimensionality is. Okay, so let I think that part of the problem is you've got about six theses in your thesis, so it's not no wonder you're exhausted. You know, um, that often happens in, in uh, when one is trying to write these kind of things. You, one of your theses is the, the uh, way of approaching this thing called the art object and what happens in its, the work of art, mm -hmm. literally. You know, mm -hmm. like what, what is the work of but art? I would dedicate more than a paragraph to that, because that was really the spark that, that made the curiosity going. I'm just saying, I think it's yeah. a whole thesis. What is a work of art? Okay, the second one that you talked about is the relationship of certain concepts in physics to understanding epistemologies in a postmodern mm -hmm. environment. So the second law of thermodynamics, the question of uh, complexity and feedback loops, uh, the notion of um, surface, and uh, all, all the stuff that is, is happening about the, how, how something coheres and creates the, the limits mm -hmm. without setting a bar, like um, like what Kate was talking about. So it does set bars, but they're like little scratch type bars. They're not real bars. They're not like, they're not, they're maybe the leotard turning bar. Mm -hmm. That's another thesis. The next thesis is that you're actually having an argument around, let's say, the relation between epistemology and ontology. Sometimes you use them as the same words, sometimes you use them as different mm -hmm. words, and every now and then comes the question of aesthetics. Then there is a, the next one, which is a whole nother thesis, on the importance of the transcendental, or not, you know, to work. Now, that's enough to make you want to just go home and sleep for a long time, okay? So, you need to pick one of those. But the, 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 I see what you mean. And then write, and all the rest can slip into those. Okay. You don't have to let go of them. Just put them on a different page. They don't all have to have the same... And that that is the problem. Every time I start thinking, they all come to me at once. <laughs> yeah, they're all like, you know, it's like multiple personality issues. Yes. Except, you know, it's like, <laughs> me, 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 you know, like, me, feed me, feed me, feed me. You know? But I, I know that I, can, I need to introduce, um, it could be just a glossary, but the number of concepts from complexity so that I will not leave them out. I, no, no, they need to be there in order to, for the argument to make sense. And because I am using a very specific area of scientific research, which is not necessarily known for the generic, general uh, ground, I need to give these concepts. But do yourselves, all of, your, all of you, do yourselves a favor and use the uh, sort of the um, works of people that have gone before as you know a target, even, so that you're not inventing the whole wheel, <coughs> you know, yes. because that is just exhausting. But for and example, you'll end up with Lee going, look, we're working in the same area, and even I'm not getting it, so. Uh, the, the comment that um, Lauren made earlier, bringing up Stengers, referring to the Mills or not, I mean, Stengers develops a brilliant and, uh, a description, a description and criticism of um, the model of classic science and its relation to ontology. And it, it, it comes up in cosmopolitics, but is already developed in order of chaos. Um, at the same time, 
does uh, a, a reading of Kant which is so close to the letter that is unproductive. Um, and Kant can be very valuable still. So, uh, vice versa, there are details in the work she does with Prigogine that lead in a direction that is different than what she says. So I, I need to go from some, some gen more generalized position, like the overall position of Stanger's take, to details in order to move forward. So what you need in chapter one, in the introduction, is you need to figure out who are you boxing with. Who are you going to be in the boxing ring mm -hmm. with? It's going to be more than one partner. In your case, it's going to be at least three or four. Now we've got three main ones. Well, I would say, no, that I, I certainly, I'm boxing with Deleuze and, and Maria Sue. I am allowing myself with Stangers for quite a bit of the role. So that might be a dance. Uh, <laughs> with, uh, and with uh, Leibniz uh, for another long stretch. And then uh, Kant and some concept of Popper. But that's good. So now we have, now say that again. Say, say, say exactly what you just said. Again, so that. So I am boxing with uh, Deleuze and Meliasu. That's introduction, yeah. Uh, and then for quite a bit of uh, the, the, the role, I am allied with Stangers. Okay, next chapter, yeah. Um, I am uh, sort of flirting with Leibniz. Flirting with Leibniz, yes. <laughs> right. Okay, well done. Um, Finally admitted that. Okay, uh, good. Uh, Out of the closet with Leibniz, yeah, that's good. On and off uh, for quite and, a and, and we have to ask, where's the pleasure? <laughs> Yes. Okay. Good. And then, um, and then the last step is where um, Kant, Popper, and the, the incompleteness of of Gödel and the trust become a new Okay. Let's now just say it again one more time. So boxing with, uh, with Deleuze and Meliasu at the beginning. Okay. Uh, at the beginning throughout. But those no, are no, the no, boxing. No, no. We're, we're just talking about we're talking about writing this thing. So. What's going to happen is you are going to carry these boxers with you, mm -hmm. okay? Because God knows you don't want to leave anybody behind. Okay. <laughs> you know, being inside your head must be really interesting because you've got a lot in there, okay? So you're boxing with these two. That gets you going, mm -hmm. okay? After, so you're boxing with them. We'll figure out what you're actually what the rounds are about in a minute. But you're boxing with those two, and then what happens? And then you flatten them, and you win, and you go with the belt to <laughs> chapter one and who do you meet in the hallway? Isabel Sanders. And you start <laughs> right, excellent. Okay, you meet Isabel, you know, and what and what is it about Isabel and Prigogine, right? And Prigogine, yes. But but, but less so. And mainly Isabel. Is irreducibility. The, the, the way she develops the argument of irreducibility as the problem of classic science I ontology. Perfect. Okay. And now, and do you have a conversation with her? Is it dinner? Is it a banquet? Are you dancing? What are you doing with her? Let's say if you want to keep the money, it's a banquet, but I don't have pudding, which makes me so Again, the pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's yes, like no change there. Okay. I don't have pudding. <laughs> As in, I stay, I use a lot of what I'm saying, but uh, there is also some, some, uh, some parts. Uh, so you don't take all of these at all? No, I don't take. I don't and you're not going to go to bed with her in the end? Maybe. <laughs> okay, maybe. Maybe just a dalliance. Let's see, see how can I speak. All right, sorry. No, wait. We just. I just want to get the okay. the chapters down because you're almost there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then, after you've had your banquet, no pudding. Things go well, but not as well as you thought. So you got to say bye, but not so bye that you're gonna like you know, you know, leave her all together. Mm -hmm. And then you go to. Then I go to Leibniz. Not Leibniz. Yes. Yes, and? And the problem of composability in Leibniz. And, and, and have pudding. And, and have pudding. <laughs> but you see, then, then I can use, I can still use uh, the, the, the complexity of work. Yes. And, and cause it's going to be Leibniz and Chaitin, right? Leibniz and Chaitin, the problem of simplicity. Okay. Uh, which that, that also leads to, to Gerda. Right, but, okay. But I take far less, so it's a sort of, Mix dinner because I will come to But it's not dog's dinner. It's just no, no, a mix dinner. It's a messe. It's a messe. <laughs> okay, and tapas maybe. Yeah. Okay. Because obviously, Leibniz is uh, 
Hegel still has a very you know, strong, clear metaphysical position. God, 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 and a God, however, there is, however, God is much more of a selective process, a selective principle yeah. than a creative uh, agent. Right. Um, and he's submitted to the laws of... It's very Jewish, you know, I mean, because, you know, in the Jewish religion, because mm -hmm. um, you don't know this, I mean, I, I'm obviously Jewish, um, you know, the one thing that uh, people who are Jewish tend to do with God is debate, you know, and you can, it, it's like there's a discussion, you know, God might have a position, but you have it, you know, let's discuss this. No. And, and that's always been a thing. And so it's not surprising the Leibnizian mood. He's having an argument with God, mm -hmm. it's, which is unusual, because usually the position is you don't argue with God. The, the whole point is that it's God, and God knows, and God does weird things. But in the Jewish religion, the whole point is that you do have a discussion, right? Yes. Maybe <laughs> one. What about two? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you How can negotiate. Use, uh, yeah. What about sixteen? Right? Yeah. Sixteen is a good number. Yeah. Well, they, well, they have a. There's a. There's a, uh, now for time for a joke. Uh, there. Uh, there's the old joke where um, Moses was given the uh, Ten Commandments and and uh, and he goes to the Philistines first and he says, you know, do you want these commandments? And they go, uh, well, um, how many are there? Uh, no, no, they said, well, give, give us an example of what you're doing. Well, you know, thou shalt not sleep with your neighbor's wife. No, we can't do that unless we do that, you know, so we're not going to give that up. You know, so then it goes to another group, some other group, and he says, you know, do you want these commandments? And um, and they say, well, give us an example. And it's like, you know, thou you will not be envious of blah, blah, blah. You know, like, oh, we're very envious and we can't do that. So then he goes to the, the, uh, the Jewish tribes and he says, you know, so... Um, so look, I've got these commandments from God, and they say, well, how much do they cost? And we go, well, they're free. He goes, okay, okay we'll take 10. <laughs> and that's very typical Jewish humor. Okay, so, so what you're doing, or what Leibniz is doing, is doing this little negotiation thing, as are you. Okay, so now what happens after you have become an honorary Jewish person? Okay, now what goes on? Then... Um, the, the compossibility of Leibniz has a direct link with the problem of consistency uh, in the method. Which is the dream Lee's of, notion of cohesion? Uh, no, consistency as in the dream of Russell um, Hilbert, the dream of a completely justifiable and a priori field of mathematics and logic, okay. which fails. Mm -hmm. And uh, fails, uh, fails with Russell uh, in Wittgenstein. For what very strong contradictory, um, Gerber manages to prove why it fails and prove why consistency cannot be um, ever <coughs> a priori, which is you know, in, uh, the, the reverse, the not reverse, but the, 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 in parallel with chanting, the incompleteness and openness. Of the system. And that's still the middle chapter, that's yes. still the but pudding that, chapter. That, then it, when it becomes interesting, if one um, links it back to complexity, which is this. Continuous building things, but then it's the last chapter where incompleteness becomes dynamic. Mm -hmm. So the extents of um, uh, what's it called? Um, consistency of the present of sense it is expanding rather than to be proved a priori. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, I think the notion of transcendental can be. And does that sound pleasurable to you? We can't say no. I'm too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so that, that's what I originally called body without skin. Then it sounded it is a bit gruesome. I, I I wanted to I wanted to speak of something that does not have an a priori definition. Mm. But nevertheless it is what about skin without a body? But then you're back to Leotard. Uh, no, I, I like the idea of body because I always in this case I I work in reverse from uh, body without organs. And I think that you know, the point is precisely the opposite, that complexity do build, does build organs without purpose. Well, that's Zizek. Zizek has a whole book out called Organs Without Body. I haven't read that one, but I don't think it's, it, I'm quite sure I'm not saying I'm quite thing. sure you're not doing that, but just be aware uh, that that is a book out there. In the sense that the body, is, because it is not a priori described, 
and it's dynamic because it is a, an open system. It's not a state of fluctuation. Fluctuates inside. It's open to perturbation. Can become something else. Then, um, but what is is consistent. So okay, so that would be your last chapter. Yes. So that would be. Do you know the restaurant Boule? No. Does anybody know Boule? No. Great. Okay. Do you know? Do, nobody watches Master Chef. Mm -hmm. No. Did, did I say hear a yes? I know. Well, <laughs> it's Spain. It's, well, yeah, but anyway, Boule is a sort of famous, obviously not that famous to this group, but anyway, famous place where they make like frozen. You know, they use like nitrogen and they do weird things with food, so that comes out looking very peculiar. Does this what's that? Molecular. Molecular. It's like a, it's a very odd. It's like gadget, gadget, gadgetry kind of thing. I, this, I'm putting it in a bad light because this sounds stupid, though, but it sounds to me that you are the boule version of this. <laughs> so your conclusion, we're sitting, we're sticking with the the, the boxing banquet thing. Mm -hmm. So your conclusion is frozen yogurt, basically. Right, or <laughs> what, what, pudding without pleasure. <laughs> no, not a pudding without pleasure. That's terrible. No, a, a, a differently constructed pleasure, something like that. Or what is? What's your? What's your? What's your boule? But the conclusion is that B U L L I. Having gone through these steps that present a different way, a different logic of sense, a different way to explain how sense uh, coheres and uh, the remains. Together. How sense makes sense. But here, that it's, it's very important because sense is made, it's not something as meaning as something else. This different way of, of making sense uh, mm -hmm. are, um, coincides with time because it, it, there is a, a continuity. <coughs> Because complexity, as in reversibility, builds temporality rather than happening on its background. Did you hear that, everybody? Did you hear that what he just said, which was like the significant contribution to the field? Did you hear that? Yes. yes. Say it again. <laughs> complexity builds uh, temporality rather than happening on its background. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, last week, happening on what? Builds temporality rather than happening on its background. So it's happening on its background. Which is something that Virginia Stems have not go as far as claiming. They are they want to reintroduce time as the most important part in in science and in the way of thinking the natural object, the universe, for which they thought had been uh, uh, expunged by classic physics and so on. The ultimate object as a certain movement and will be unchangeable. But they they don't go as far as saying that it is changing next time. They still and, they, and in the last pages there is always this sort of quasi mystical entity that is time and they don't want to touch. Touch it. Yeah. And There's a new thing that just came out that's why I was asking about this, um, in nature. I started. I resubscribed to Nature, and I'll leave it in the PhD room um, because it is an interesting uh, journal. Scientists see Homo chipiens. It's a biodefense project aimed to mimic the human body using networks of simulated organs, and it reminded me of your work. That's why I, I um, kept it here, because it, it, it'll really only be in a few years before we have uh, simulated robots that can think and can create. It's, it's just not that far away, thoughts. And I'm curious whether or not you think that the kind of work that you're doing would speak to that kind of project. Do you think it would speak to artificial intelligence? Uh, I don't know much about artificial intelligence, but I had, I was toying with a science fiction image. Mm -hmm. um, the idea that machines would uh, at some point would come up soon with and the fact that we keep thinking or imagining but the, the image that, is, that circulates is that there's going to be a machine more or less looks like us, does things like us. And obviously, that's a, a rather unimaginative uh, uh, projection of the future. Because it's already rather obvious that it would be most likely already digital. But the next step is that I, I was imagining is that 
why should there be machines in the plural? Why should not the web itself become the big brain <laughs> and, and intelligence? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I bring, very Doctor Who. I bring these up. Because I'm sure nobody watches Doctor <laughs> Who either. I, I bring this up because to me this is, is an example of, uh, of um, a side move where instead of thinking according to what we know now, something else happened. So the next step is always an elsewhere. And so that's where you're going to leave the thesis? I think so, yes. So we've got a thesis. And actually it's what I brought in this thing of um, Melia Sue when I was saying that if possibilities might as well be infinite, but no matter what the number is, it doesn't really allow for open change. Okay, now who wants to summarize Matthias's thesis? <laughs> I mean, I was, when, when there was a connection to the master chef and the weird food, yes. I kind of thought of there is this um, girl who really printed um, snacks with the What was it say this guy? Uh, she three D printed snacks that uh, inside mushrooms grow, basically, or like the from things grow. So after a while, that's what happens, basically. So it's a little three D printed. Oh right, huh? And the mushroom grows inside, and then you can eat it. Oh. But it's the whole thing. You so can eat the mushroom. Yeah, it's a whole. Uh, so the, it's the, a snack. The food, the flavors grow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind of. So, so she puts, she three D prints the basket and the kind of seeds and the eat. Can you eatable can you ground. send that around to the group? That's uh, an edible that ecosystem. Isn't it? Yeah, but it's all it kind of it's three D printed in the kind of form of a snack, and then you kind of you know you can have it in a restaurant. What do you mean it's three D printed? Does they it you print eat something food. that you can three D print the food? Yeah, yeah. yeah. they use it. Three D print with skin and. And like what that. did they, they, they do? Like logical recently, they did a burger yeah. as well, didn't they? Mm. They, they? They made a burger without uh, actual cow Buns. meat. They produced mm -hmm. the cow meat yeah. but without actual. And they made a burger. Well, they, made, they made the actual made the burger flesh. Yes. Yeah. They, made, they made the meat as yeah. meat, but artificially. That's what but they made. Oh. Bully, bully the restaurant, that's about. That's about Someone food. does know that Bully <laughs> the restaurant. It's about making different tastes rather than. Food. It's actually yeah. the combination of things on the plate and that what happens in That's the why place. I think it's closer to what Matthias is yeah. doing, because it's about creating something that doesn't exist. Not in the sense of trying to recreate a food, but to to create flavors and, and experiences that 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 have never been mm -hmm. and that and that and never can be again. That, they're just very odd. Can I go back to what Mark was trying to ask? Probably you now lost it. Uh, you are going around the notion of aesthetic. Mm -hmm. What is the aesthetic? What is the question? Um, there is another bit in this that refers to, to, to Kant and Kantian judgment, um, which also refers to Media Sue, which I think is uh, important in explaining how this has a relevance for uh, philosophy and also to this question we have for, for aesthetic, where it is and how, in, in which relation it stands for. Is that in the critique of judgment, in the aesthetic judgment, especially the third moment of aesthetic judgment, Kant describes the aesthetic judgment as the, the judging that there is a purposiveness in the object judged without a purpose. So then we, we were going over that a lot last year. Um, as um, the fact that this obviously is an object, it stays together, it must have a meaning because it stays together. There is coherence to it, but we don't have a concept of for organizing and this uh, distance um, is the space where the aesthetic pleasure takes you know, as room for, for developing. And obviously the more this distance increases, the more we go to our sublime. And if, and this, if this will never close entirely, so this purposeness will never reach the purpose of sort of, or not even pleasure that remains sublime. Now my I associated that, and in a sense it's quite near, is that these purposes without purpose can be a form of givenness. Now, did you say purposefulness? Purpo pur yeah, this is the special account of without purpose. As in, it's not clear, there isn't a, a telos, there isn't an end, there, isn't, it's not, uh, there, is, a, there is not a concept from intellect mm -hmm. that. Uh, 
that and organize and place and, and close this prison. And nevertheless, the, the object of aesthetic judgment, or, or the, the cost judgment is reflexive. The judgment six looks for a person that's saying it. But isn't that, I mean, without trying to mm. simplify it too much, isn't that precisely what curiosity is? Isn't it? Mm, yes, yes. I said, well, I wouldn't, yeah. You know, because it is something that that one's propelled by, doesn't, you know, you haven't filled in the blanks, you just... But, I, I, it, what comes with these uh, these move of, of complexity, going to, with, trying to develop uh, another explanation of forgiveness for it, is that, although that the subject is obviously in there, but what, what is very interesting is that, to me, uh, and, and I'm trying to explain it, is that the whole configuration of the present, is coming up together, and in it, subjects and objects, societies and politics and epistemology find their own organizations. But there's always this remixing and, and, and finding, developing and while well developing the parameters all at once, mm -hmm. simultaneously, that um, generates a new givenness for which there isn't a concept yet. And this is why this is a attractive synthesis. But that's interesting. So that's how you end. Yeah. Now, who would like to summarize? Kate? <laughs> I, yeah, I know you knew. That's why I, you were writing furiously, not looking up. <laughs> but I, said, I know that old trick. <laughs> Try, give it a go. Okay. So. Ryan sounded a little happier about it. <laughs> Starting from wanting to be able to speak about art in the post-structural era. Post-post-structural post, post, post era. Um, and you have a problem with your boxing companions, Melissa mm -hmm. and Deleuze. Um, I'm not entirely sure I grasp what the problem is, except that they can't. But they're just a problem. They can't get Yeah, it's like through. neighbors. You just don't like them. You know? it's just like, <laughs> they're loud or annoying. They can't get away from onto theology. They yes. keep coming back to Please. metaphysics. Please. Yes. Point that too. Wait, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, you're good. You're good. This is good. Um. So that's your initial sort of part, your ch chapter one introduction. Um, you're trying to use concepts in physics to understand postmodern epistemology. Um, and who does he meet in the hallway once he's finished his triumphant boxing? So Stenger's. Um, helps you because she talks about irreducibility mm -hmm. um, and this is somehow connected with feedback loops mm -hmm. which is the thing that really interests me which is connected to knowledge epistemology because it's not closed it goes back and it doesn't it's not closed in on itself so <coughs> it picks up sort of new information from outside of itself so it never ends where it began <laughs> so it progresses um, but then what happens to Stenger's in the hallway then um, disappointment <laughs> then he moves on to Leibniz <laughs> it is useful because he um, talks about compossibility, mm -hmm. which is two things coexisting. Several. Several things coexisting. So it's a, it can be a multiple singularity or a singular multiplicity. Right. <laughs> I'm interested in things which are incompossible, being alive and dead at the same time, but that's not really clear. Um, so what's the difference between incompossible and compossible? Precisely. Um, one is spelled I am. <laughs> no, and that compossible is uh, um, a group of things that is not does not incur into internal contradiction. Uh, obviously, it starts with uh, the idea of 
um, the principle of identity and non-contradiction of one individual entity. But then Lamas expands it and says, well, how is the present and state together as the way it is? There must be no contradiction, otherwise it wouldn't stay together. So it, can, it comes up with this, this the idea of compossibility. All that stays together must be compossible, must not negate or be in contradiction with any other of things that happen. Um, and all that is in contradiction with that is automatically excluded into another universe. Um, so it, it, the, the, the image of a pyramid that progressively excludes incompossible instances and ends up with only selection of all that is equal, it is compossible, it is simultaneously possible. It, it remains inside the Newtonian logic of you know, there can be one body in space and one body at a given time. Um, <coughs> leads to, to one configuration. You can start with many options, all equally uh, valuable, and progressively by interacting them, by putting them into repetition, into algorithms, mm -hmm. some will combine and some won't possibly stay together, should be mutually exclusive. So those are the mutually exclusive are shot out, shot out. And progressively you don't sh do not shoot out one option only, you shoot out all configurations because simply don't so it narrows down and down, down until yes. it gets to the point of pyramid. So that's interesting to compare with the notion of irreducibility, which mm -hmm. is the opposite of that, is it? Uh, this is where Leibniz, uh, you know, I can have this sort of distant, you know, it takes this very long <laughs> table because <laughs> e very long yes and no. Um, it, well, I, well, I could certainly say that uh, the um, complex processes that are not reducible are selective processes that respond to the laws of composability. Um, is there in Leibniz the possibility of rewinding the process? I don't believe he actually looks at that in these terms. Um, at the same time, he does speak, it remains proficuous and you know, creatively ambiguous how the system passes from the metaphysical monads to bodies. And there is room for saying, at least, that monads, which are the strings of information, progressively combine themselves and become more and more complex strings until the, the they time they, they are yeah. matter. And that's, I find. Until you know, they are a hamburger, or there's mushrooms. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's very, very, very interesting. It, it, you can, we can say this because Leibniz is not entirely clear about it, I find. But why not? It's very, it's very good to, to develop this idea from um, and then next, you're doing very well, Kate. Then I've got a sort of diagram here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then either uh, the first time you kind of went through it, you went on to Kant and Popper, but the second time you went, you skipped them and moved to Gödel, and you talked about um, incompleteness. Mm -hmm leading to a dynamic of complexity. Of incompleteness. Okay. Uh, Very good. Yes. Kant and Popper, I, I associate them. Um, sometimes Popper is associated with Kant because it does speak of directly to the problems of time and space. But, I, but what I found interesting is that the, the objectivity of knowledge for Popper is transcendental as is the unity of nature for Kant. That's what is interesting. And that's what, to me, reflects um, the known teleology of a complex process. And can you explain for those that have forgotten what transcendental might mean? Well, you, you remember when we read Kant last year, but that's usually. Yeah. Transcendental is something that applies to everything that is not exhausted by all the instances of, of the present world, that is nowhere else either. So the problem that Kant starts with is that rather than thinking time and space are <coughs> uh, absolute background dimensions, he says they are a form of our intuition. In other words, we cannot apprehend any object without time and space. Um, therefore, this, uh, this is the way in which we organize the first uh, data from knowledge. And the object of experience is, of, is already is something that is all, all, always already packaged with this time. The object of experience is already synthetic. But times and space are nowhere per se. 
And so this, the, this is the first form of transcendental, describing transcendental aesthetics. Then the transcendental becomes, uh, uh, this is also the problem of the, the unity of the universe, the, the unity of nature, the cause for everything, and freedom, which are responding to the same problem. There is, I cannot find a, a point of origin or a point of reason for what it is. God that originated the universe, but at the same time, Kant says we are using that idea as regulatory. We are reason, using that as a, as a reasoning tool. A reason, reason tool. tool. Yeah. Um, so, it, it, uh, and he does say this is prob this uh, is a problematic idea. It is it, it's something that needs to be constantly uh, kept open because it is it uses it, 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 in a certain sense um, he speaks of the projection to infinity of uh, the all the local causality in order to reach the cause. But since it's projected to infinity, you never, you never have it. Um, so there are there are slightly different ways of understanding fashion that the transcendental. But you described it once as an incomplete circle. And yes, I, I found yes, I, I said the, proce the pro proje projection to infinity. You know, it, it, it was a circle between to have what well, God is what it is, is sitting somewhere there and has created the universe and this is instead we have all the causes of the universe that we have to know, we can know. They still do not amount to the cause of existence of the universe. But we reason as if we have a cause of that. So it is it is a very, very interesting uh, it's a counterfactual. Uh, it's like the beginning of the counterfactual type of arguments. But anyway, don't, yeah, don't worry about it. And it is it's extremely Fertile as an idea because you can uh, use it, but you are not 100% bound to it, and it, it leaves room for for for, uh, for for wiggling, for creativity, for, for for thinking, for asking more questions. Which is it's very interesting on this because then just reads Kant in a very tight, narrow way as the one that has translated Newtonian uh, the Newtonian model into ontology. It's true, but it's also pointless to read Kant in 2015 like that. Um, it's far more interesting to. I don't know if she should be your <laughs> <laughs> uh, It's pointless what you've written. Is no, no, it's not. It's not all of her argument. It's sometimes there are comments about Kant. Yeah. She, she just had this uh, very close reading of it. And I, instead, I find that both the notion of priori and the notion of transcendental, especially in the light of what she wrote about complexity, can be reinterpreted as uh, the a priori as an initial degree of roughness and the transcendental as the, the, the uh, dynamic incompleteness that keeps reducing precisely because it is open. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the, the way, the, the distance I think from Melia Su because that Melia Su doesn't, it cannot live with openness because it's sort of, it moves from ontology, it stays in ontology entirely, needs to name and give a presence to the fact that there isn't something it, it, it doesn't, the, the limit, you need to say, well, beyond the limit, there is something. And that's the same thing that there is that. Mm -hmm. but instead, if, if one thinks that the body is open, and the body is bound by contingent necessity, which is a bit of a contradiction in itself, it is a far simpler description and still works very well. Actually, it gives necessity to what is without having to entrust necessity outside what is. So, okay, then what is, what do you think is the, Piece de resistance mm -hmm. of the thesis, then. But how, what's the question? Well, I'm of? just looking at this and opens with no body and complexity builds temporality, and I'm thinking opens with no body and temporality, and I'm trying to work out. Is it, okay. um, is it something against space? It's, it's no, there is not something about space, but there is a problem with um, ontology very often sliding into uh, using space for, for organizing sense. Um, because every time we, we if even the, the image of time becomes specialized, spatialized, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, in, in these terms. You know, the, the linearity of time versus the plane, uh, the, the space becomes a metaphor for discussing the relation between substance and accidents. And it, this is not an accident, as it is not, sorry, this is not an incident. This, in the end, becomes the image we have of, to, to explain why things are the way they are. And the, 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 the wealth 
of the analysis that Pedro Chinastan just made in favor of time allows for not only taking apart uh, the specialized form, form, model of ontology, but uh, for moving in, into a, a different way of thinking. I mean, it is really, sometimes I find myself like, having to do mental gymnastics just to understand really what this is stating, because one of the problems uh, I found uh, earlier on was that maybe I should have just stayed with describing new tools for thought for this argument, then I found it was a bit limited. Pleasurable. <laughs> um, there is this. It's. I often say, and, and I will have to put it in, uh, toward the end, that this turns inside out the logic of sense, um, which is very different than just turning it upside down or or taking it again and taking it the opposite position, mm -hmm. which to me is what is happening with all the, this recent speculative near materialism or they, they are just swinging the pendulum to the opposite end and we've been there already so mm -hmm. uh, I find far more interesting uh, and indeed pleasurable trying to think something entirely different mm -hmm. entirely different it means cannot be measured with what is now and this is what complexity does complexity means an heterogeneity uh, in its circulation so that's your conclusion yeah. hmm. So I think we have and that's, that's why it's hard. That's why you keep that. But you but see, if you if you allow yourself to have these kind of markers, mm -hmm. that sounds silly, but actually they're very helpful. And no, um, but they are very helpful. I need something very basic to organize them. Yeah, and that's all you need because because the people who are going to be reading your thesis are going to be a lot less knowledgeable than this room here. And if everybody in this room here had issues on some level, I mean, I think it's clearer now, but it still may not be clear. Guy, how's it sitting with you? I mean, you're, you're a pre-PhD person, so you're really a newbie. I mean, now it kind of makes sense, but yeah, it's like a lot of, there's lots of holes for me, because I don't know a lot of time, I need to really get to know, mm -hmm. it's, it's very new Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know, there is one thing that kind of struck me just from the beginning, which I, something which I'm really thinking about now, that's uh, possibilities are not to be fulfilled, but are part, mm. part of the of dimensionality. And this, um, this, this thing is kind of, is kind of my book for the whole. No, but it Can is, you say it again? It's it it in the title, right? Finite possibilities yeah. and dimensionality. I mean, the, the problem of possibility is very important. Yes, but here's how you're really in the work, because while that might be in the title, mm -hmm. yeah, can you say that yeah, again? <laughs> it's a sentence. Is, like, possibilities are not to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. but, but they are parts of not to be fulfilled, that was my... That's uh, right, okay, I grabbed yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I grabbed that, I take it. <laughs> I'm not yeah. that. Right, what are you hearing? I think my whole issue is I don't make the... I don't think the connection between the two is that aesthetic or art and the complexity is clear enough at the moment for me okay. to make that link. I, I see, I see no, it's that. important that you... Like, and it's, it's very, I absolutely right. No defence. No, it's continued. No, I want to answer, okay. okay. <laughs> Not yet, let her, let her say. Because what I hear at the moment is that, uh, at the start anyway, I heard that you were talking about complexity as this process towards making, uh, or producing a work of art as, a, as an intensity of that of complexity so that it exists without... Um, having to have any kind of prior knowledge, so that it, it in itself creates a logic that stands alone from any other yes. system. Mm -hmm. or, that might be problematic, but <laughs> you know, any other kind of way in. But then the other side of it I hear is in terms of when we were talking about removing um, the, the pleasure or the sensuous element of it, that's us talking about the experience of art, so that's almost the flip side of where I see mm. you writing about it. So. Um, my issue, not issue, but my question when I was kind of reading through all of this is you talk about sense quite a lot in relation to um, almost, I don't want to say rationalising it, but applying the science to sense. And I don't know if that would... <laughs> I don't really have a, a comment on that, but I don't know if it, it almost applies to your idea of irreducibility as well, because you're almost trying to... Um, 
now this is where I'm confused, but apply a kind of a, a logic to the way sense is experienced in art or is produced in art. You are you making a question? Are you asking if it is uh, experienced or produced the way I use it? I don't know. What I, was, yeah, I think. Okay, uh, there are two two answers. I, I agree with you. It is very important that the, 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 it is clear how I pass from what I was saying about art uh, at the beginning and how I develop the argument. And I am. Uh, inclined to almost leave out that preface about art because it is confusing. And I am not talking, I don't want to talk about um, the way I make art. Uh, I think that my way of making art is rather, well, it, it is what I am describing, but it, the thesis does not want to explain how I work on it. The thesis wants to, to, to engage with the logic of sense. Um, in such a way that then I can be able to talk about how I make art and how I engage with art when I find it. Um, so that's for the first part. The second question, for the distinction between making and, and experiencing sense, um, he, I am I'm emphasizing more how sense is made. Uh, however, in this, in this regime that I am describing, uh, it, the experiencing of sense is part of the same thing that you, you would not have it without that. So the, the making of sense is also uh, a process where those who experience sense are creative. Well. You're not convinced. I mean, there is a, was a no, no, it's just, it's just not, I'm not saying it in a, in a mean way or something. I, just, I think that maybe what people may be hearing of the group of people that think that the sensuous has been dropped out of sense, that, that side, uh, is that it's, the way you're describing it right now, or the way you're posing the argument, it, it sounds as though it's very, calcul it's like a calculus. And, the, and it may be, in fact, when you say algorithm, a lot of people don't know what that means necessarily. I mean, it, it's some form of a calculus. So the, the question becomes, where's the poetic? Where's that? Where's that kind of fuzzy? One <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> once, once one moves out of uh, thinking uh, in terms of reducibility, or in, in terms of explaining everything, um, everything that is happening now, according to something that is elementary and can be is at the same time at the only thing of time but also next to us precisely because it is elementary and the present can be reducing once you step away from that you have any configuration that is available at the moment and this configuration just does what it does and then something else arrives and it, if it can combine with, combine with it it is wonderful in itself the fact that it can combine with it so there is a point, there is a wonder, there is a marvel about it, and there is a sensuality as well, but it's a special kind of there is a, there is a wonder about it, precisely because it can do, it, it does, not only do, but it does things. Um, it creates meaning, it makes sense, it goes on. What can it? Whatever is with the next step. What was the step before? And another step. I mean, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Joe? It, it is a bit like shouting and sort of screaming, it is alive. They think of... of uh, it's of alive with, with Frankenstein. <laughs> it's alive. It's alive. Um, so, I mean, the system is a series of jointures of any kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's not a system. Yes. Okay, it's a system. So it's a system. A complex system. Mm -hmm. That has steps. This language that you, this language of material synthesis and physics is how the kind of feeding back on the job of explaining the steps and somehow it's attractive to work in that manner. Although that's not what you want to talk about. Sorry, there is a system, a series of jointures. That system 
uh, steps, okay? The steps of, uh, probably we say are very com complicated. But you don't really mean step as a step. You mean it in a logical form, not an actual, like... Yeah, yeah, in logical, logical form, yes. Um, so, but it's not, it's not, uh, it would be a fractal segment. It wouldn't be a segment that actually is fully in, formed. In, in, probably the, the, the word I left out of these, and I, it should be, uh, it's, it's one of the things I find uh, very interesting of the noise is not notion of rhizome. Obviously, these configurations are completely rhizomatic, um, but they are rhizomatic without the plane of images attached to that. So part of the thing about your thesis is that you have to be a thief, a little bit of a thief. Oh, very much. And so you need to, I think, quote from Genet, <laughs> or go to Genet, the, uh, the thief's journal, and really understand what it is that you're stealing. Because you're, we, we've set it up as a boxing match, then a little bit of a banquet, then, a, then the pudding, then boulet. And now, sort of the, it, there's also something of a thief in there. And I think that that, if you can see yourself, allow yourself to be this thief that's putting things, that, that, that has some other relationship going on, and then presenting the goods. Mm -hmm. Maybe that will help you as well. I don't know. I, because we got to break this thing that you're in right now, this, this, yes. this nervousness of writing. Joe, how, what were you going to say? I was wondering, are you going to make any art? Because yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing that's missing. No, for just two, two reasons. One <laughs> is, is uh, nothing banal, it's a food uh, I, they, For me, these are such different ways of operating that uh, I could not keep the two going in my mind at the same time. So that's I decided at the beginning. But on top of that, and far more interesting, is that I find all these as sensual as working with. Um, uh, so uh, I, this is... A, this is another practice. That also what comes out of the, uh, uh, the, this, this case, yes, yet another thesis. But this is another practice. Stanger speaks at length of an ecology of practices and an hierarchy of practices and theories. And a, a system that, or, or a present sense, present and now going hand in hand constantly, that organizes itself rather than sort of being taken off the shelf of the infinite possibilities, distributes and organizes its internal economy of theories and practices, if you want to stay in those terms, in situ, in place, so that the, the, they're all becoming practices, so they're all becoming theories. Now, they, that, uh, the hierarchy is no longer there. Okay, so that's the, the factist, the factical factist, mm -hmm. in the sense that Yes, but not in this sense of being completely lost. Uh, I actually find it a, a, a great uh, platform for, for both creativity and freedom, the fact that they do not have a place where they go. They're both. They so you have a plan. But the, the fact that there's no, no pre-laid plan, that the possibilities do not have to be fulfilled because they're not out there. They are, what is here is what dictates what can happen. But this is what I find, um, I'm still a bit short with words in describing how a dimension, a possibility is a dimension. Um, <clears throat> on one side, on one, on one level I could say that um, if, if we think of uh, um, possibility would be to be fulfilled if we would have a pre-laid territory, a totality, which we know one way or another, it doesn't matter how we know it, but because it is already there, so we will progressively have to fill it, or explore it, or discover it, or conquer it, it doesn't matter, but it's there and we get to it. Um, and in a certain way, this is the image of space that classic science has produced. Space is there, matter fills it. Um, relativity disproves this, but Complexity does this at logical level, not the scientific level, because it shows that the, the bodies... The dark matter the, matters. Matters, and it is a dimension of this. It's not... It, the whole idea of opposition, the opposition is not a beyond that is beyond forever. If it is a beyond, it is beyond for us, or if we wouldn't know it is there. 
as soon as this is a problem that Yasu does not uh, does not solve or Russia does not get to it is that if he says that there is no reason then reason is not period it's not a known reason that exists as a known reason and then it's beside the, the mental acrobatics is a nonsense I mean it's um, okay we'll stop you right there um, who hasn't spoken yet okay. oh. <laughs> can you help Mattia out on any level here I know that you've just come in and she's been ill for like ever. And now she's <laughs> going to like respond. I just think it is about defining the chapters that we've talked about today and um, sort of having to let go of some stuff that you're looking at. Oh, ah, yeah, that's a very good yeah, yeah, to be able to focus on what you really need to do to look at your um, final thesis itself. But I think you have got to let. I'm I'm not going to say what you've got to let go of. No, 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 you can make that decision. Already, that there was a bit too much. Of it. um, I think that's the main issue, and I think that's why you, why we're struggling and why you're struggling because there's so much information there and as Chris pointed out you've got it all there it's just defining it a little bit clearer and I think if you can actually just not use your trash bin so much but <laughs> just let go of some things for a little while that you can retain to it about to say it really yeah you've got to think of what you're going to do after you're not going to sit around for an hour, you're yeah. in this, you've got to save something. <laughs> Lee, what, anything else you'd like to add to this? Um, I suppose it's a pretty slide, but, uh, okay, just said, but you know, you, you were talking earlier about you know, you're going back and re rewriting all your notebooks and all that kind and of you stuff. Have your it's like, so I remember you telling me it's like, yeah, it's like racks of them or something. It seems to me that that. Is entirely the wrong way of doing it from my perspective and actually you should be thinking of the, kind of the whole structure and thinking it from your own perspective and try to understand you know, the general drive of the whole thesis rather than actually trying to go back into the minutiae of the detail and 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 it seems to me that it's it's the whole it's the kind of yeah, that's, the packaging that that's, that's missing and not, and not the ingredient starting point, but <laughs> I'm not able to work like that, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah but you yeah. will be. Um, but, I mean, but, it's, it's but the thing is, when people ask you specifics, yeah. you can answer them quite that's, clearly. That's, that's, yes, well, that's why and I, I think am. that's the frustrating thing, because then when, once you've gone through that explanation, you start to expand it again, and it's just... It's like a balloon, you but sort this of is why, blow this it up, is but then you I, almost get to burst. The, the only, and I resisted doing that, uh, thinking that I could stand back point out the steps and then uh, fill them in progressively. But every time I do it, it and then I look at it, it, it's completely different, but also it feels like somebody else's thesis. I don't recognize yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I, and I, instead, working off what the notes I have written, uh, like this thing I sent on Monday, um, I can just copy them, collate them, put them in some order, and progressively the thing will take shape. I mean, it's the only, the only method of, trick I can see at the moment um, for putting things on paper. I think if that works for you and you're struggling um, to get it on paper then that's the way you then, need to do then, it. At the beginning it will be easy but eventually it will be uh, it will get more and more complicated because uh, can, in, on a metaphor it's like a puzzle you start mm -hmm. with, a, with this two, three, yeah. four pieces that fit nicely and then you feel satisfied with those three, four pieces, but then eventually when you will need to uh, connect a piece that after a bit becomes being here with another one that is here, you will really need to make a big jump or either you decide not to connect it because it's a, it's a, it's a thesis and it's not necessarily your whole thought that you can, will develop in the next years. I mean, either you just accept the fact that you can't connect everything or always I can write bridges at some point. Right? And also, don't forget the word supra mm. as a footnote thing, S-U-P-R-A. Whenever you are writing something in one chapter and you're referring to something that you don't feel like developing or doesn't make sense to develop at that point because it gets you off track, 
you can make a little comment about it, but then it's supra chapter seven or whatever it is. So you, you, you jump to, you, so, so a reader, if they want to see what's, what's going on and, and they're following the argument, they think, oh, there's a gap there. And you realize, oh, there's a gap. But you see, I really need this other whole set of, of concepts. And you use supra and it jumps you over to this, it's like the black hole, it's a, the wormhole move. You just go into this other section. And that, that's, so allow yourself to know the little games that we can play with footnotes, which is why we use the Chicago, plug for the Chicago version. Yeah. Okay, now, Barbara, do you have anything more to say? No. Uh, what I said at the beginning, or? Hasn't shifted. Uh, no, 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 um, I think what I was trying to say is that the way how you build up your argument is a form of making art. I mean, it's when, when you answer that you, you actually don't want to um, make artwork mm -hmm. as part of your thesis is somehow, you know, um, made sense to me because because I feel that the work that you are actually doing is, is a piece of artwork and it's based on text actually, but anyway, it's your way of of approaching something, and and of course it could be if if it's another work, another thesis, another uh, moment in your life, then it could uh, form in it could find its form in another way. But but this way, this this moment, you are writing your thesis, and and this is yes, you're absolutely right. If it makes you feel any better, Derrida took 25 years to write this. Yes, I'd rather take another day sooner than that. <laughs> um, and then you need 25 years to understand it. Yes, well, okay, there's that. I, don't <laughs> <you're> <laughs> I did last week. Um, anybody want to add anything? Anyone you want to? I mean, I think this was, you were really skilled at dealing with this, and you should take hopefully some solace in the fact that this was a serious grilling. Um, your external, your viva will not be anything like this. It will be like a walk. Yeah, but this, I was hoping exactly for this because yeah. I needed, uh, I knew there were uh, passages that were intuitive for me, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that needed to be drawn out so that, but I didn't know where they were. But I also wanted to say to the group that people really did rise to the occasion as well by looking at the work and by being generous with trying to work through. We were kind of all in this together. I mean, to get everybody out into the, you know, past the vibe and through the thing. So I think that it's useful that um, you've been able, I hope that it's useful. I think, yes. And I do think that if you can think in terms of the boxers here and the hallway here, really stupid things that you're obviously not going to use in your thesis when you're actually writing, but they become very helpful friends as you're writing because it allows you to come up with a logic that is not false and not true. It just it just helps you go on the path. You know, and that and then it allows you to think think, okay, like Gay's right, like what can you let go of? You know, what can you not let go of but needs to be suprad? What do you what can you do? And so eventually if you can write the um, the the uh, chapter progressions in like a sentence, you're there. And maybe you won't be able to do that until you finish or even until you finish your viva. But you need to understand like what goes onto what and then what goes onto what and what goes onto what and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that the one of the words you um, haven't really discussed at all is the poetics, which I know is a part of it. But yes. I don't know where it's going to fit. Or maybe it's not going to fit. Uh, no, it does fit. I, I, um, I had a brief tutorial with the Sun Supervisor of David Chisholm last uh, September about it, um, where I was saying that in the process of emergence of these complex iterations where, the, where new properties arise that were not implicit in the previous stage, um, precisely because it is a process where the, the order and the parameters of the order are reworked <coughs> in simultaneity, what comes out is uh, constantly questioning both the distribution and the existence of uh, 
um, dimensions as poetic politics, ethics, epistemology, mm -hmm. ontology, mm -hmm. uh, and, and more, or less. I mean, one could come up with the dimensionality of one dimension, one come up with dimensionality of 17, it depends. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so poetics, the, the, in, in a certain way, um, the, the, the associations that permit these uh, combinations are the poetics mm -hmm. of a complex process. Yes. But one needs to keep very clear in mind that uh, in this situation, much more than anywhere else, poetics and poetic are the same. Yes, but it reminds me of a kind of a nod to Bachelard in his Poetics of Space, yours is Poetics of Complexity, or so something like that. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's something going on that allows one to completely shift the the move. And that's what I think is very exciting about what, what is happening in that work. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, so first of all, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so next week, Jakob will be in the firing line. Uh, if you can send all your tutorial reports, or the ones you want to send, uh, and anything else, and whatever you want people to read or look at. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, and then the week thereafter, it's uh, Winterborn, and then the week there, and then we have a break for Easter, which is two weeks, and then we come back, and it's Grace, and then after Grace, who wants to do it? I just want to say mine won't be as complex. <laughs> That's not true. Um, oh, that's actually quite similar. <laughs> right. It is similar, yeah. <laughs> it just literally is complex. complex. Who wants to, who's working on something that wants to go after Grace? Barbara, why don't you be the one that goes after Grace? Okay, okay. Okay. If you, so I won't be able to come next week. But if you, I That's would do, I would fine, do no worries. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really okay with it. <laughs> Okay. Let's I also mouth to feed. Like when I was like at Matthias' stage, somebody said, "Have you read this book?" And it's actually quite a simple. I think it's something like how to work your PhD. And actually, it just made it really simple. I actually made my chapters smaller, and each chapter had more focus. And it really, I just sort of turned the whole thing around, and it did just become so much simpler. Can I, can I ask the most banal question? Will we get not again? The one again? again. <laughs> So Wait, say that again? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that the brain thing? Thing? Yeah. No. No. Okay. To what extent? I have to, to give an account of the thought. Just, so just so it's understandable. Just so it's understandable and that it sounds like you know what you're talking about. So it doesn't have to be this detailed thing unless you're actually, like, so, for, for example, it depends on what it is in Billy Sue that you really want to deal with, but if you're not going to use his notion of consciousness, in fact, you're going to use something else, then you've got to somehow develop that notion. If you're not using the mystical consciousness that he has, then, but if you are, you just, just enough to place it in your uh, arsenal so that nobody can say that uh, you're not pointing out the important things of his work mm -hmm. in that case. Or standard or whatever it is. Okay. What kind of because of the Interesting. Yeah, I'm going to scan it. Yeah, I would just, just borrow it. Oh, you borrow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, and <laughs> that's, a, that's a really interesting yeah, issue because, because that's where the, there also is the yeah. chapter on the endangered yeah. dead, which yeah. I thought was quite interesting, and also the one on the homo chipian. So it's quite a mad. Uh, it's quite a mad. Yeah. Uh, Oh, I'm working on a, a, a pen, a parent deck, with Anastasia, we're going to project when we apparently die, but and we kind of deal with it, but <laughs> as you do, as you do. Right. Okay. which came from the moment of a pen to then fly in the coffee, yeah, but there was a new study actually, I don't know, I read it somewhere, and it's regarding that it has, because as much as then they kind of thing, and they, and there's only this moment, yes, but men and women think differently because they have different brains. Like, and go back to the biology, that's, you know, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, but listen, we know what, you know, and, and they actually started, um, they, they were looking at it, and 
that actually it's a physical biological thing that's identified as it's not necessary well not yeah. that it's men woman but that it's all this one well, big spectrum. I mean obviously if you look at different bodies yeah. there's different bodies yeah. right but that but what happens is people read into yeah. that mm -hmm. knowledge logic yeah. mathematics <laughs> You know, you think, you know, driving. Yeah. I ended up not being, I ended up actually yeah. giving up on a friend who was a very well known philosopher who remained unnamed at the moment because he insisted that women did not know how to drive. Oh, God. And it was just like, this is, I mean. <laughs> I'm a woman. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was just incredible. Well, I, I'm a man. He's like, well, you are a man. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm neither. I'm 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 a hermaphrodite. I, I don't know. I'm a I'm a snail. <laughs> What's that? What's that? What was that? Say it again. No, I'm just kidding. Lace <laughs> square. Okay. Um, like a snail in the corner. Yeah. Now you shall. Yeah. <laughs>